we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order at 6.32. I think this is the first time we've ever been late calling the meeting to order, so apologies. Um, do we have a copy of the agenda, Carl? I have one here. Okay. Uh, thanks. So, would you like a printed Are there copy any adjustments or, no, it's okay, I'll write it down. Any adjustments or modifications to the agenda? I'd like to add an item about uh, an update from the SEOC regarding to debris removal. Okay. Any other updates? With regard to the executive session, do we need to expand on that all to include up to and including possible offer of employment? Or can we leave it we just as an executive session? With potential offer of employment. Got it. I think we could add an item at the end for potential offer of employment. That might be a better way to do it, yeah. Okay. Okay, so <coughs> our agenda right now is consider, okay, uh, update on the library recovery for insurance related um, follow up, building repair work. Update on insurance adjusters to the municipal building. Um, repairs. Discuss, sorry, consider obtaining evaluation on Railroad Street Bridge. Update on the FEMA public assistance process. I, you know, these updates to process are going to be the death of us, I think. <laughs> Um, discuss appointing a floodplain ordinance administrator, administrative officer, very specifically, sorry. Um, discuss establishing a board of adjustment or using the review board. And then, up to, that's a slight modification on my part, by the way, right there. And then an update on Sterling Market contacts. Um, and then also discuss potential agenda items for a joint meeting, which we can discuss that either tonight or we can do it separately, whichever is fine. Can I make a general comment about our agendas for these work sessions? Yep, sounds like you're on it. The, just that I, I think it's great to have specific action items, but yep. I also want to be able to have a free floating discussion about any flood related activities. I guess I don't want to be necessarily limited to mm -hmm. specific agenda items because if something pops up that's flood related it it seems to me that it's important enough that we ought to be able to talk about it at these meetings since that's what they're for yeah okay got it so we could so we'll add that as a general yeah item general discussion we'll maybe we'll put that as before the executive session Welcome, Paul. Uh, I missed one, by the way, which is report on the August 9th substantial damage determination meeting. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, okay. So let's move into an update on the library recovery. So Carl, do you have updates for us? Well, as I um, wrote to you <clears throat> with your agenda notes, um, the Masonic Temple is not looking to be named an additional insured on the town's BLCT passive coverage and passive reports that the town's liability coverage for the library moves with the library operation. So that part of the coverage just moves over to the temporary quarters and we had previously reported that the contents had been relocated to the Masonic Temple. So long and short of it is, there's no additional cost. And we don't have coverage. coverage on the collection itself? Yes, it's under the contents. So anything that's in the- Liability though. But that moved before they opened the Masonic Temple, yeah. correct? Right, we had reported to passive I the, uh, even the day that they were moving their stuff from the library to the Masonic Temple that 
that's where everything was going to be housed. And that's because the contents are covered generally, anyways, right? They could be in any location as long as they were known. As long as they were known. Yes. Because they were known. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And the and then on the work, um, we Crystal Woodward and I did meet and, and scoped out the work that needs to be done. Everything from checking the furnace and the heating system to uh, painting upstairs. And uh, we decided that it probably would be best to have a heating repair service come in to check the furnace and the duct work. One thing we have to check on is whether or not water got into the, the duct work and the other is uh, flood silt inside and um, if there is it needs to be cleaned out otherwise it might dry and then when that forced air system comes on it could just be blowing <coughs> dust all over flood grid. and then we also have to have a plumber come in just to double check on things like the sump pump the hot water heater and um, just the plumbing in general to make sure that something didn't shift and that there's not a leak somewhere when we go to start using we toilets or uh, sink. Okay. An electrician needs to come in and uh, finish restoring the electrical service and then a general contractor would come in and do everything else. Are we thinking a general contractor could just take care of organizing all of the other bits and pieces? We thought it might be better since we have relationships with some of these other uh, tradesmen that we might be able to call and they would just come in and do it and not have not get the markup that a general contractor would put on doing that. But do we have to competitively, competitively bid each step? Well, talking with Ron, for instance, the heating, because we have a relationship with Brusso, if we could document that maybe with invoices from that they were hired, put in that furnace and that heating system, and then invoices showing that they had come in and serviced it. Um, that that would be sufficient for that one. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure about if there's a standing practice with an electrician or a plumber in there or not. None but, that I know of. But the electrician. You know, that could be a simple, um, you know, few bullet point RFP to put out to, to get um, prices for somebody to come in and do that work. When you say uh, restore the rest of the electrical, are you talking about getting them off of a temporary service? Yes, I think they did not um, do a full, um, I don't know what you would say, reconnection or checking on everything from what I gather. Because when Surf Pro was there, Surf Pro was doing things, and then they they needed more electric service to run more fans, so somebody had to come in and <clears throat> do some more work to provide that. And when I was there with Crystal, I remember seeing there's like two boxes, and one of them seemed to be not reconnected again, not in operation. So I think I could be wrong, but I thought. I mean, anything that's Rolmex that went to the panel that's in the basement that got flooded needs to be replaced. So it's going to be like <clears throat> a bigger job than just. Rolmex all got wet too. Rolmex all was <clears throat> the panel. Panel is completely submerged. Yeah. So every piece of Rolmex. I think it's a bigger process. And I guess where am I? So you're head? talking about the cabling? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I'm fine with going about it this way. I guess I'm envisioning the electrical being a lot more. And because well, I it's guess a we'll lot do more, further check out um, th that out. We'll see. And like I said, the plan was to put together a, a, a more abbreviated RFP for that <clears throat> kind of work. Okay. And uh, obviously, the library trustees' opinion taken into consideration, I would rather see the electrical panel be installed upstairs, not in the basement where it will flood again. Okay. But, I mean, I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes here. That's been mentioned about putting it upstairs in 
a little interior room where, if I remember <clears throat> right, it's just like almost looks like a hallway, and at the end of it there was a sink. Yeah. Um, and the, the stairs to the basement go go down right there. Um, that's right. There was no. I think the stairs to the basement are inside of a, a small toilet room. Yeah. Near the um, the um, teenage or young adults room, but there used to be steps in that room, and that's what they said. They have to decide if there's room in there to bring the electrical panel up and preserve the ability to reuse that location where there used to be steps to the <clears throat> basement. So if the RFP makes reference to bringing the wiring, bringing it up and bringing it to full compliance with code, that that probably would take care of it. If the trustees are on board and there's enough space. And the trustees are on board with the library specifically because of, do you mean because of the electrical? Well, I'm talking about the library board. Library trustees. trustees. Uh, uh, library sorry. Trustees. Okay, sorry. I mean, yeah, gotcha. I understand how that can be confusing now. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Uh, anything else on library repair? No, I don't have <clears throat> anything else. For anything. insurance, Carl, um, I know you said the liability shifted with the books, but um, we still have insurance on the building itself, correct? Okay. Oh, yes. poor assumption that but I should say it anyway that Jasmine who's responsible for building and maintenance is going to draft the RFP no it's Crystal and I seem to be the lead oh, on that. I'm, okay. Okay. I'm writing up the general specifications slash instructions to bidders and Crystal and I will work together on the technical specifications or the actual description of the work to be done. Okay. And with her background, you know, she's making suggestions on on what that should <coughs> be. Got it. Okay. I'm sorry, and there's another point. We talked about Jasmine's role and her husband. There was yeah. at one point they talked about him coming in and giving advice, but there was mention that he might be interested in bidding on this work, so I suggested that they not be involved just to maintain no appearance of conflict of interest. Yeah. So a practical question, Will, is it your anticipation that the RFP would come back to this board? Or yeah, um, I've actually, yes, I remember you saying you wanted to see that, and I advised the trustees that that would be the flow um, that we get something drafted up and it would have to get your approval okay. to um, <clears throat> to mount the bid. Okay, um, the other thing that I want, wrote down is that FEMA code, whatever the code is, like the DRC. Oh, DR. DR, uh, whatever yes. that number is. Mm -hmm. I think we should put that on all of our RFPs as a reference number. Like well, the the um, general specifications instructions to bidder will start with a background paragraph and that will state that in response to the flooding of July 2023 the library town of Johnson needs to have its library building um, repaired and reset and so that would be documented there I was just thinking about the case number very specifically because of Ron's recommendation last meeting about if we had that reference number and when FEMA is going through looking at documents. Yeah, that'll be on the invoices. 
So the you don't what I picture is there, that bid. Ron would have a set of documents that the top one would be the invoices, and then there would be oh, something back. behind okay, that is back, and the specs back would up. and the um, bid tally sheet would be back up to the invoice from the general contractor. Okay, but don't we have to show that there, like we submitted multiple? Like we have to approve multi an attempt to get multiple bids right. back. Right. So we would have the invoice, then the the specifications for bidding, and then whatever we do for advertising, put something in the newspaper or put something um, on the state website and get screenshots <coughs> of that and have that there to document that attempt to advertise it, and then the the bid report sheet or you know the report of the bids at the bid opening and then there should be a copy of your minutes showing that the select board awarded the contract to XYZ contracting on such and such a date okay and that's all behind one invoice I would that's how I would picture it because um, the invoice is the main thing they're going to want to see town of Johnson is seeking reimbursement for Six hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. The first one is, you know, seventy-five thousand dollars from the library repair, and then all the documentation for that seventy-five thousand dollar claim. I like all that you're saying, Carl. Um, I'm hesitant because I just want to make sure that everybody who will touch the paperwork all along the way understands this, so that we have a method to directly link all these things in the office. You know what I mean? Um, anyway, it certainly wouldn't hurt to make reference to the to the DR number, or whatever. I don't remember what that number is, but yeah, sure well, honestly, Ron's them. idea of uh, just having a stamp, or maybe it was uh, someone's idea. Uh, yeah, I really I like the stamp. It's very one of labels. <laughs> makes, it, makes it nice and easy <clears throat> every time. Um, but anyway, like the actual uh, like like reference number does matter, but that's less of the issue that I think the bigger issue is how do we just make sure that every step of the way this documentation everyone in the office understands the filing system around it I guess that's probably the bigger thing for the short term I could ask Ron if he thinks it would make his job easier if that was put on every supporting document we've already advised everybody to make sure they put DR 4720 on all flood invoices so that it's it's clear and somebody in the office doesn't have to scratch their head and wonder was this a flood invoice or not right yeah. okay good stuff it's all in relation to the library okay uh, is there anything else do you need a motion for any of this or you just no. need the blessing to go ahead with the RFP? Like well, it'll come back to you when it's drafted, so you don't need any action tonight. Okay. Anything else in the library while we're right here? So is the plan for them at this point, given that it looks like they're all clear on insurance stuff, to actually um, open their doors and start buying <coughs> again? Yes, fairly soon. Cool. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, that's good. Okay, awesome. Um, next up is update on the insurance adjustments for the municipal building and the skate park. Yeah, so as I wrote to you last Friday, I had emailed asking that question, and we still have not received a response. But it doesn't hold us up. And we can proceed like we are with the library and getting prices and proceeding with the work. Same way with FEMA. The FEMA doesn't expect us to wait for them to come around to get this stuff going. We just have to document the files. Yep, okay. So maybe we just keep that as an agenda item until we get more, get traction. It still blows my mind that they didn't just do all of them in the room time. Just for clarity. They, they have not sent an adjuster, and you, and you don't know when they're necessarily going to? Is that correct? Well, they sent an adjuster 
for the library, correct? But not for, but the, not for the municipal, municipal skate building. park. Yeah, correct. And potentially an insurance adjuster is going around. Uh, have you talked to Jason about maybe them checking out the salt shed and salt storage? The insurance adjuster? All right, FEMA was there. Yeah, I know FEMA was. But would insurance cover some of those losses? <coughs> I don't know. Most likely not. I, d I don't think. I didn't make a claim on the salt okay. shed, so we yeah. might. No, we might want to. <coughs> is there damage or potential damage to the, the building, or is it just the, oh, some of the salt? The salt. It's the salt. <coughs> All right, and FEMA looked at that and is taking it into consideration. I think it's on Ron's report for initial. I was on the last one that we got, but I think we're doing another one pretty soon. Be my guess. But that's a, a good point. Like our materials must be covered. We probably should be filing a claim for them if we have material loss. It's not like it's a small ticket thing, right? Oh, ninety dollars a ton. Twenty tons is eighteen hundred bucks. I don't know how many tons were impacted. I don't know if they would know unless they dig into the pile to see how deep the silt went. Do you have a? You have, you said something about there's silt in the salt at one point. Oh, I don't know if there's silt in it. I know it's like clumpy. Lost its saltiness. So, Sandra, we just haven't, we haven't even had an adjuster, insurance adjuster visit the municipal building yet. How is that acceptable? Mm -hmm. now? Yeah, I agree. Like, it, it should not be. This is a long time. This is four weeks. I mean, granted, we probably filed a claim two or three weeks into the. It's probably a week and a half or so, maybe two weeks since we filed the claim. Because At least I filed a claim within first days of with first week. Of us talking, it was well. You weren't here the first week, Carl. So it was before you were back. Yes, Duncan filed. Yeah, claims. right. I Duncan filed. filed I filed back. four claims, so <coughs> and then I gave I weeks. gave copies of those to Carl. Um. Okay. Municipal building repairs. <clears throat> so in this case, you have the same role the trustees have at the library and in this, but in this case, it's also a bit more complicated. Um, so you have to decide, and probably in conjunction with the trustees, what you want to do there. So there is a quite a wide spectrum of possibilities. So maybe because we're they're voting on this tonight. Eric asked me for language about exactly what he asked me. Um, he asked me for language about motions around the shared buildings. So I sent him what the motion you had suggested. For lower storage. For the lower storage. So I think it's on their agenda for today to give us authority to move forward. <clears throat> we'll find out. Sooner. Well, that one would be a, one that would be high on my list of topic of discussion at the joint meeting, what, what to do. In, in my mind, we need a short-term plan and a long-term plan. The short-term plan would be more geared towards 
getting the office back into some sort of usable format. Yeah. And the long-term plan might be flood prevention measures that we could and should implement, you know, including moving up to the second floor. And it could range all the way from that to looking at another location for the building. Whoa. I mean, I, I just, I, I'm not advocating that. I'm just saying that we should, probably shouldn't take anything off the table in terms of what we're thinking about in the long term. We could jack the building up. I, lo I laugh mostly because Paul said something very similar to me. It was very, like, wait a minute. <laughs> Moments so I can understand your reaction. Yeah, I, I, I'm not advocating, <clears throat> but I, I, get it. I don't think we should take it off the table either. I agree with you. About suspending it with skyhawks. Okay, so basically your point is that we need to have yeah, long term discussions. Up. Yeah, <clears throat> understood and agreed. Okay, um, for the short term, I think that's what the the village is voting on, voting on maybe as we speak. Um, so let's we'll just make sure we follow up with them. We'll hear from them either way, um, and we can bring it up on. Monday's meeting, maybe where that stands. And to your point about joint meeting agenda items, got it. Do you need anything from? I mean, are you guys at the point of trying to structure an RFP to get the work done, or just looking for some general guidance at some point? I think yeah, just how, how how much work do you want us to put into the, um, the improvements, or do you just want us to? kind of patch things up and get something on the floor so the first floor can be reused for offices while you work on this longer term plan i'm interested in getting an idea you'd say you know do you want to learn about what improvements an architect could suggest i'm i'm kind of interested in that <coughs> um and seeing what the options are for the current space <coughs> uh going forward and then as others have said exploring other possibilities <clears throat> I think we we asked Rosemary, because of how short we're talking, but we told Rosemary that she should feel free to look into getting uh, organization mm -hmm. of the offices now. Like, don't wait for that. So that part, I think, is already good. We already talked to her about that yeah. the last meeting. In terms of their occupancy of the second floor? Yeah, yeah. Okay. just organizing <clears throat> the things are right. now. So yes. along those lines, Thursday... The, the crews are going to move five sets of shelves that are in the library basement right now. They're going to take two to the temporary location and bring three over to the municipal building so that we can get stuff off of tables. And if you've been in there, you may have noticed there's tables all over and yeah. <laughs> stuff sitting on them. <laughs> and that takes up a lot of space. So. What we talked about is getting shelves to put stuff onto, including we found a set in an upstairs um, service room of some sort. Maybe the furnace or something was in there. Mm -hmm. And they set that up already, and the staff has started to use those. The thought was just to better organize things and set up a, a, a practical and good um, meeting space. So like the trustees tonight don't have to be sitting around the little break room table that they made, um, but to have a, an actual meeting space in that room. And possibly um, look at <coughs> opening the front door and letting people resume coming up that so that when they come in, Rosemary is not the receptionist which is what's happening now, is mm -hmm. they come up the back steps, the first person they see is Rosemary, and they start talking to her, asking her who we to do, whatever, and then she has to take them over to see whomever is. So if people have figured out they can go in the back way? Oh, yeah. yeah. And nobody's enforcing the fact that the offices are closed at this time? Oh, when they get upstairs, I mean, that's the first, you know, they're in the building is when they open the door and they're there. So Is that a fire? That's a fire exit door anyways. It could be locked. Uh, yeah, I was 
But I understand what, what flow you're talking about. I mean, I think it has to be, I think we have to state that it's closed because without the elevator, without access to the elevator, the second floor is not handicapped accessible. Right. So yeah, there's probably it the is end. closed. What's that? To be clear, it is closed. Yes. <laughs> yes. And we've been clear about this. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, uh, as a select board member, I have certainly been going in and out the back door, and I'm sure other people have seen that, and um, you know, all seen all of us going in and out like that. But at some point, there's probably benefit to being if the, if they're going to open it for people access, there's probably benefit to opening the door and having access to the elevator and keeping people out of the areas that we don't. We didn't have to start relocking the door into the downstairs office space yeah. so they can't get in there. But I think that is, as you point out, Beth, that probably is a Rosemary decision when she feels comfortable to actually open it up to the public. It's, it's complicated. I, I went have in so today. Many thoughts, so many thoughts. Um, but, um, let's, let's pick this one up. Let's pick up office access at the next meeting. So Rosemary's here. And we can ask her some questions about that. Uh, because, because just to be clear for like the record, we don't <clears throat> have an open office. Like, it is not open. People should not be going Close to the office. Public. Yeah. Now, somebody doing a title search, would that still be considered public? I think that there need, be, need to be special accommodations. I would imagine that, like, during COVID, they made arrangements to... It's a good point. Go we already have a map for this. Yeah. Right. The, dif the difference is that then, I think I pointed this out at our last meeting, right now the records are downstairs, the people are upstairs. We real Like I went in today to do some research on the old zoning regulation, I brought the books upstairs and, you know, viewed them upstairs where I was in view of, of people. By picking the book up, you were not in view. True. Yeah, and I could have walked out, you know, I could have walked out the front door with a book. Um, so, I, you know, again, that's a Rosemary. She's the clerk, and that's ultimately her, you know, her bailiwick. But there is there is a protocol, you're right, for, you know, dealing with record searches. I just, I fully agree. The office is closed. should be pretty clear. I just didn't want to hold up real estate transactions. Yeah. You make a perfectly good point. A Three bunch of stuff is already available yeah. online for that. Uh, That's true. So for those you know, tech savvy ones out there. Yeah, but most of the people that are doing title searches are doing them online anyway because it's so so much easier to yeah. do it than it is to travel to individual town clerk's offices. But. Okay, so we will pick that up at the next agenda, on the next meeting. I mean, on the next Monday's agenda. Although, yeah, I agree. Okay. Uh, we kind of went off track, off topic here. Um, evaluation of the railroad street bridge. So I wrote to you that uh, Ron asked if you wanted to have an inspection done on his report that he sent in today. He restated that. So um, his summer report dated today says confirmed the VTRANS bridge inspectors completed their work. Recommendation to contact a town engineer to conduct more detailed bridge substructure inspection beyond the visible bent sidewalk railing. And that a contact person is the District 8 um, manager. Stephen Stanley. So, you have that recommendation. Do you want to have us look into bringing in a um, private engineering firm that's qualified to do such an inspection and have it evaluated? 
I feel like we should be asking the emergency management about this because we, this feels like something. Yeah, that, so we the town lodged a ticket to get that bridge inspected and the bridge the, on Route 15. No. Oh, that's a no, um, what's that road? River Road East. You know that road? road? East. Yeah, River Road East. Out east. past, oh, like where it turns yeah. into a dead end. Yeah. There's a concrete, I guess it's technically a ridge, but it that's looks a, more like a box culver from the top. Yeah, it's an old, it's an old structure, but I think. Those two were requested to be inspected through SEOC. I never heard back <coughs> about that ticket. Um, I think for safety of the public, I'd like to know what something like that costs, but. I don't think we should do this. I think the state should help us. Can we, we have FEMA money for this kind of thing too. Can we find out if the, or do we know if this, so there's a, there's a whole team of state bridge inspectors and on an annual basis, they do 50% of the bridges in, in, in any given year. Can we? Quick I have to be wandering around on the state um, website and the Department of Transportation, I think, I believe, has a state responsibility to inspect bridges every two years. Railway bridge was last on September 15, 2021. It's due anyway. Railroad Street time. Bridge was 2021. Yeah, September 15, so it's coming right up anyway. Yeah. So maybe we just ask them to prioritize it. I imagine they have a few um, requests already for bridge inspections but but the thing is that get when we put a, we the put a SEO, uh, SEOC ticket in they said that they're caught up on responding to all tickets and if you haven't seen a response to that ticket we should follow up I, I wonder if the um, inspection that was done is their yeah their um, answer to the ticket but we do we have one have we seen an inspection report yeah that said that so they found that the sidewalk railing was bent and they didn't see anything else. So Ron's I question understand. is how, how in depth did they get? I could have told us that. I think that, yeah, I think we should still follow Can up and say this is not, not what we were asking for. We were asking for structural integrity and they're coming back to us and telling us to do the structural integrity. Well, the whole point was for them to do it, not to us. So I don't think they were suggesting, I think Ron was suggesting that we might want to follow up. I, I haven't seen the report, so I don't know what it says. And they are structural engineers. <clears throat> so if they did a structural report on it, and they noted a bent rail, and there were, does that mean there was no other structural issues observed? or I don't know that, that this... VTRAN's um, bridge and structures crew came out and, and did this. The report did come from um, Stanley Stevens or Stephen oh, Stanley. District eight. Um, and it was a very, very short report, like three sentences. Okay. And it's not a report. <laughs> That's an email. Uh, well, as you as you well know, when VTrans, the, when the when the bridge, you know, structures the bridge division, does an assessment, you know, that could be two or three pages long, um, for each bridge. So it sounds to me like the the bridge division hasn't done an actual inspection. And I, I agree with you, Beth. I think they should, unless there's a critical, unless somebody is feeling like there's an imminent danger to the traveling public to go over that bridge, I would suggest we wait and have the bridge, you know, the bridge division do their annual report, especially if it's due this year anyway. I'm going to ask the question at the next, next SEO, SEOC that I join, which I'm not sure when that's going to be yet, but... Tomorrow? Yeah, but I don't know if I can join it tomorrow. I think I can, but I'm not sure. It's Wednesday. Uh, they moved. I think they moved like, them. Yeah, I feel like it's tomorrow. Um, Do we have any actual safety concerns over that River Road East Bridge, Evan? As far as you know. Um, the company that was doing the sewer work underneath 
The River Road East Bridge. Oh, River Road no, East. The, it's just the, the oh, that just had such washout. Um, Jason said it would be good to get it inspected. Concern um, about the abutments, perhaps, or perhaps. That one would have been fully I, submerged, right? I didn't see a bolt load, but I'm not a bridge engineer either. Yeah, no, I would have been. I'm but sorry, I was... interrupted you about Railroad Street. Did, did they see something uh, concerning that? Well, they said that whatever rack was supporting the sewage pipe was built very sturdy, and for that to be ripped apart, maybe we should get it looked at. That's as far as I have for info. I wasn't down there. <laughs> Just based off of the noises <laughs> I heard banging off the bottom of that bridge, it's definitely worth a further look. Um, yeah, but if the state's coming out and doing an inspection in a month anyways, then great. But if not, we should probably look into it ourselves. It's a good record. Definitely supportive of getting the state to pay for it, though. <laughs> well, they won't pay for it if we do it. If well, we I hire a, a consultant to do it, I think that's going to be on us. Then the question is, is that a FEMA reimbursable expense if we do it? I guess maybe that's a wrong question. Let, let's find out about the, let's find out first. Let's, let's yeah. ask the that's question, so then if we, if we don't get a good response that is helpful, then we'll issue two tickets, one for each bridge to make sure they both get addressed and specifically <coughs> request that um, state bridge engineers do the assessment. So that we have confidence in structural integrity. Okay. In the interim, would it be worth having Carl or Ron check with an engineering firm to see if there's even the capacity in an engineering firm to do a bridge inspection and what, what the possible cost might be? I mean, we could. I'd rather not pay for it. We have a lot of things we're going to be paying for. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I, if we can get it. My, my major concern is, is there is there a reason to believe that there might be a danger to the traveling public? If there is, we should spend the money and get it done. If, and if there is, that should be cause for the state to step in quickly. I would argue. Yeah. Uh, well, the real I would argue. I would agree with you. The reality is something different. I think. But <laughs> just just because I mean we, we can't be the only town in the state that's got problems with the bridges and there's only so many bridge inspectors. Um, unless we have political pull with somebody. I think we could probably make that happen actually on a few <laughs> different fronts, given the connections we've made for the past few weeks. Yeah. Uh, Maybe. It'd <clears throat> be nice to think we could. It is nice to think of that, yes. I think we can. I think we can cause a little bit of a stir. Okay, let's take that. Um, I don't know that I want, I mean, personally, I guess it's not up to me, it's up to everybody else, but I'm, I don't think we need to go down the route of reaching out to an engineer personally, but if the consensus is we do, then let's do it. Not yet. Well, never mind. It doesn't matter. Consensus. <laughs> I was going to say okay. we don't know what we don't know, but I was good with pumping the brakes for now. Okay. Cool. So update on the FEMA public assistance process. Okay, Ron's report that came in today. I advised you on the first note from him. The second note is. When did? Sorry, I haven't looked at that. When did it come in? Today. Did it come just to you. Yeah, I didn't get it. I'm sorry, I, I don't either. pay attention to the, all the time, but yeah. this address Johnson Select Board. Um, okay, maybe it bounced back. Okay, anyway, do you want to? So the second note was um, that he reached out to Casella to get information to help with the documentation of the roll offs, and uh, there, Casella was able to help him with some locations were different or items that were on the invoice 
they were able to help him with saying that the, that one was a dumpster that was at the corner of Main Street and Railroad Street, as an example. They did not have photos. As somebody had suggested that maybe Casella's staff takes pictures of all those. That they did not do that. But he did get some information from them. He did talk with Rosemary a little bit more about the coding of the invoices, and that's where the DR4720 part was brought up. And uh, if I recall correctly from overhearing their discussion, Rosemary decided it wasn't necessary to get a stamp, but um, <coughs> that she might actually, she might do some labels. So she could peel a label off and put on, uh -huh. but um, that, and then we sent an email out to everybody who might have an invoice, asking them to please include DR4720 on the invoice. And then Rosemary and and Ron were refining the the. Um, system that they're going to use for keeping track of these um, by a different, um, I forget the term that he used, item number maybe, uh, in the NIMRIC system. And I think Rosemary told you last week that from the accounting system, she's setting up a whole new fund, so a, a new fund a, a indicator will be put in the system and then she could use that for both the expenses and the revenues. Uh, he's working on the debris management <clears throat> information. He mentioned um, talking with Duncan and with Jason Whitehill, trying to get some records of what happened in those first few days, trying to, to build um, that information for documentation purposes. And Lydia in the office is helping to collect information about what volunteer time there was and for what purpose. Who is she collecting that from? Uh, different people that we suspect might have been involved and also she's reached out to all the committees Did that were involved. Did she reach out to the United Way? No, I don't. Is she reaching out to town volunteers? Looking for town volunteers. Okay. So if she could reach out to me also, <laughs> Evan, we'll have additional people on our list, I think. <clears throat> and for debris removal, um, I'm not sure if Ron has talked to him yet or not, but Nat Kinney would be a good... Yes, he yeah, knows so. about Nat Kinney, yeah. Yeah, he may be trying to set up a meeting with me and Nat. To gotcha. And I gave, I gave Ron a <coughs> spreadsheet of my volunteer hours. That's best to, a lot of that was related to debris management, but, you know, quite a bit of it was emergency shelter stuff, too, so. Yeah. Should LEMP people be keeping track of hours? What's that? Should people on the LEMP be keeping track of hours, the emergency management team? I don't know that they in, in, in include that or not, because that's like you're a town official there. Right. I could ask Ron. Is Eric Osgood also had quite a few hours. Yeah, Eric, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Eric could demonstrate some hours. Yeah, I think if Lydia just reach out, reaches out to both Evan and I, will provide her list. with a list. Yeah. Yeah, yeah all of Matt's hours would be compensable too. Or reportable, I don't know about compensable, but <clears throat> we don't know yet for sure. Uh, I went through and took uh -oh. screenshots of all of my text messages with everyone over time, and there are a lot of people did that yesterday, a portion of my day actually. Uh, all right, and he's also trying to um, help um, document the debris removal process with photographs that other people might have. Um, so one idea we had was to contact the Historical Society to see if any of their members happen to want to get out and take pictures just to document this event for future historians. Um, the lady that Lydia talked to 
was not aware that they had done that, but they are all talking about it now and seeing if anybody in the community did get out and take pictures. That would help. I don't know if that's worth a front porch forum post. I didn't see too many people out front of the dumpsters taking photos. I didn't either. Um, it's not a photogenic thing. Yeah. <laughs> I think that there probably are some folks from United Way who did. I know I have some. I have a couple. Um, and um, sorry, I forgot what the end part was later but um oh i know what it was i think before i was thinking about this this weekend and was trying to figure out a good way for people to dump photos into an album and i think we need to have a method to receive photos that doesn't fill up ron's inbox for example uh really quickly so I'm working on getting a repository where people can dump images. We get a hashtag. We could have a hashtag. That's really, that's really forward thinking. <laughs> I'm shocked. I, I would actually. Is I'm it because gonna, it's trendy? I think the hashtag idea is a good one too because then we don't have a bunch of junk images being dumped into a repository with maybe limited space. Um, we would have to. You know, go through the hashtag and see what's usable and what's not. But um, I'm going to really show my ignorance and say, what the hell does that mean? It's the pound, the number sign. The yeah, but how the does that the repository or the hashtag? So the, um, I know what a hashtag is, but how would you get a? Ha I mean, wh what's the use of having a hashtag in terms of collecting photos? On you social could, media sites, when you put a hashtag in front of a sh set of words, it will basically create a, a thread of posts with that hashtag on it. So if you post a picture with hashtag, hashtag Johnson Flood 2023, <clears throat> every picture that is posted with Johnson Flood 2023 will all show up in a feed so you can go through them all and, and see um, you know, all, the, all the pictures from that <coughs> hashtag. It's, gonna it's say just it's a, it's a categorization edge. tool. I think, the, I think your hashtag idea is a wonderful idea. Let's do it. Hey, can you say that again? Wonderful. Evan Patch had a great idea on hashtags, right? Very technologically forward idea. <laughs> you know, I'm But it's not there. retroactive, right? You, you'd have to, I mean, it, it would be going forward. Well, like you could take an old photo no, it could be retro. out of your yeah. phone and just post it to Facebook or Snapchat it's or whatever media you want. Over here. Um, and just say hashtag Johnson2023 flood. I don't know. I, I, I am one. also guessing that we might have a generational challenge with this. You think? Um, <laughs> Are you the, saying the look that old The look, look, look on Duncan's face is telling me that there, there might be some people who are more likely to use a hashtag than others. So We can get the hashtag out there, though. Yeah. Did so your Polaroids ever dry out? Yeah. They're, they're good. Um, <laughs> <but> multi-generational here. <laughs> okay, let me work on, I think we do need to have some sort of a repository. <coughs> That's going to be unnecessary. And we can also... <clears throat> Tell people that if they need to print them because they don't know how to do it otherwise, throw them in the Dropbox. Um, we'll go those two methods with the hashtag for now and see what happens. And what's the goal of this? We need to document as much documentation as possible. Every uh, the, re the requirements for debris, debris, mainly debris. The requirements for debris are almost impossible. Um, and they came out very late in the process. Yeah. Like we were already doing for debris cleanup when very small bits of information started trickling out. Yeah. Well, I think even having, even being able to document the high water could correlate very well to the debris removal question. You know, if we said debris removal for Railroad Street and we had a, a picture of Railroad Street under seven feet of water, that's, that probably has some value. If you put the word out there about trying to collect that kind of documentation, does it have to only come in 
that one way. You just invite people to submit their photos, however they feel comfortable, email, text, put it in a Google file. You guys are like throwing all technology at me right now. There'll be some people who will stop by the office with their Polaroids. There is mail too. You put a postage stamp on it. Yeah. Maybe I if we had like a Monday morning coffee. That, like there are some things I think we should restrict a little bit. We don't know what our I think I don't know what our email rules are for file size attached to an email. Like, would it not come through? Would it bounce? Like, I don't know. I just think that. Well, there's some, a little bit of then the sender would get the message. The sender would get the message in that case. Right? Mm -hmm. We just wouldn't. We get wouldn't it. get the photos. Yeah. yeah. But they could do a Dropbox link or something like that. But if in your Google Drive, just post your public. Care about thing. There's, uh, okay, let's the do this. We're to send pictures, random pictures of yeah. dumpsters, thinking that we'll be able to use them somehow to collect reimbursement or to... Right, because the, the, there's going to be some background I, you know, I, I and understand. then you could say that that's a dumpster that was located on, on River Road West. Okay, there's other liability that we need to consider in all of this, because I don't want us getting pictures that we should not have on our servers, for example. That is one thing that um, about, yeah. So I think we need to think it through a little bit. Let's think it through. Um, the hashtag, I don't think we have any liability with a, creating a hashtag. We can just do that. Anything else with images that get sent to us, we need to be careful about. So maybe we need to talk to the tech team about what that means. I was going to say, if we only do we have only one domain or do we have two? Um, Shane, do you want to take this as an action item? Yeah, sure. I think this might be right up your alley. Um, so, like, what kinds of restrictions should we have technically? Like, do we need to use a Flickr or something with a, a safe content filter, for example? Um, you know, just. Um, yeah, I'll have to. All the things we just talked about. I'll have to. Um, I'm assuming you'll have the contact for the tech group. I have them. I or, can actually okay. forward them to you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Paul, what are your thoughts? You're mulling something over over there. No, not really. <clears throat> I think uh, I think that's kind of a good point. I was concerned about the photo a little so. So I think if you do the hashtag, it's a good idea. You can set up some general guidelines. It doesn't sound like you need a ton of pictures though. So it doesn't really have to be a full scale town wide attack on you need every photos. You can probably put the word out unofficially and get what you need for this. Um, what else do you have, Carl? Last Tuesday, Ron went with uh, Jason to the areas where there was road damage to get his GPS coordinate information to um, document the, as he put it, the beginning and the end points for those, and that will help them with quantifying the work. Before you move on to the next item, on that one, just so you know, I'm going to go through, I started doing it a little bit this weekend, but I'm going to go through the history of the website because it has timestamps every time I did a refresh, and I did a refresh many times. Uh, and it included road closure times and reopening times, so I'll make sure that that gets out to Ron too. I was going to say I can send him this. Oh yeah, take a picture. And I'll send it to him also. Sure. All right, and his last note is that um, Hyde Park today was told um, who their FEMA manager is, and he said that Johnson should be getting notified very soon. And we were watching our emails today to see if one of us received that notification, but it has not come through yet. <clears throat> and that's all the items on his report for this week. I met a gentleman at the Jenna's um, memorial for 
anniversary service. Tim Baker was his name, and he is a FEMA regional director, maybe. Um, and he said the teams will be coming soon, uh, perhaps as early as this week. Um, and he also committed to me that his personal philosophy was to work as hard as he could and have his team work as hard as he could with on um, the public assistant. He was public assistance primarily um, to make sure that uh, FEMA was maximizing um, the claims as much as possible to the benefit of the municipality. And I said that's really good news, and I hope your <laughs> I hope your individual guys got the message. <clears throat> so he'll oversee whoever our case managers. I gather D is uh, the you know he's responsible for the Vermont response. Yeah, I <clears throat> met him. I feel like I mean, I met him there. So he's definitely familiar. Okay. Which agenda item are we on? We're on the FEMA updates. Number. Okay. Um. I realized when Paul walked in that I didn't have the important agenda item of planning commission role and discussion, so we need to add that, by the way. Um, okay. I'm commendable to that. Aren't you glad that I added the item for expansive flood-related stuff? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> um, okay. Um, was all you had? Oh. On item number seven, yes. Okay, okay. Um, a report on August 9th, substantial damage. Did so, we have substantial damage on August 9th? I think that was the meeting. It's the meeting. Meeting. Uh, uh, uh. For the public assistance. Of uh, 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 on that meeting. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> we did. <laughs> to answer my own question, yes. The meeting was really good, Carl. I thought it went. I really enjoyed and appreciated the content. Yeah, Rebecca did a very good job. Yeah. yeah. So, did you stay, Mark? No, I, I stayed through most of it, and I found her presentation to be very strange. You know. I, if you're going to try and sell me on substantial damage, tell me why first, and then go into it. She sort of did it backwards in my mind. Oh, I don't think so. I thought she was defining what it was. The beginning was a little long. It was the second half was really good. Good. I it, I didn't see it applicable. To that. I mean, I'm with Will Jennison. We don't want any part of this. Most people haven't seen a reason to be part of it. And I, and I can't imagine there will be five properties in town that will have substantial damage. More than, of more than properties in town. Of more than 50% of their value, which is what? No, all of the mobile homes. Mobile, mobile, mobile homes. All the mobile yeah. homes. <coughs> could have, yeah. But no, yes. nobody on Railroad Street. Or there may be a couple on Railroad. Yeah. yeah. It's a pretty big threshold. Uh, you know, I, I don't, are they using fair market value, um, taxable value, grand list value? They assessed value by the listers the day before the flood, and it's just the structure value, no, no not the land and not the site improvements. So it would be mostly mobile homes and, like I say, a couple places under the so that 50% is probably going to be a hard number to get on the average house. Mm -hmm. And then there was another category, I forgot what the category was called. <coughs> Not substantial, it was the next tier down. Uh, well, it's next tier down, so anything um, less than the 50% of the assessed value, they still have to get a permit for doing the work. It's just that they, then they don't have to, to meet some of those floodplain regulations 
about what improvements they make and what they have to do to the house in terms of elevating it or filling the basement or making it so water can flow through and to avoid uh, collapsing the building. They don't have to do those things. If they're below 50%. If they're below, below the 50%. Yeah. yeah, so at the meeting, she was talking about all of this and giving the history in some context and somebody kind of interrupted and said, well, why would we want to get over 50% if the government's going to tell us what we have to do? And then, she, and then she pointed out, well, some people might want to because then it opens the door for more help. And so, And then other people later in the meeting or in the evening started opening up about that, and they might be looking to get over the 50%. There was a good portion of the crowd that was taking note on getting to that 50% because it helps it helps them do one of two things: either a FEMA buyout or to have to pay, help pay for those mitigation efforts. Um, yeah. My sense was the FEMA buyout would take a couple of years. Yeah. So basically, somebody's homeless for two years while they're deciding whether. But if they're um, not intending to go back into the house anyway, right. maybe that's not that big an event. And some are <clears throat> intending to go back to the house, and the other thing was that they can do modifications so that the house is li livable while they're waiting for the buyout. And if they get money to help with making it livable and they save their receipts to show how they use the money, then it doesn't count against them, they can still get the full amount of the assessed value of the property later on. So, Do you, do you, have, do you have any sense, are people using the SBA or people? I can't imagine, that, again, there's 10 people that apply for SBA. Uh, S SBA? SBA? Yeah, SBA yeah. is tricky. SBA, you have to, if you don't qualify for a bank loan, then you get the lower interest rate. If you do qualify for the bank loan, then you get the higher interest rate. And the higher interest rate sounds like it's not, like it's comparable with bank interest rates right now. Um, the difference is that you don't have interest for the first 12 months, is what I understood. And the rates, so, so again, I don't think it's really, I bet there won't be 10, 10 loans unless um, mobile home people somehow. I think there are, yeah, I think it depends. I can think of a few businesses that may be able to use one of those loans, but I, I don't know if the individual side is going to be useful for anybody. The thing is, like, it's a pretty bad situation, regardless of what, as you know, regardless of the circumstance and the benefits available. You're either in a long-term state of crisis, semi-crisis, or maybe you have a really supportive friends and family. Family, but like, how long does that last? <laughs> in my family, not long. <laughs> uh, but it's just a bad situation. Whatever the circumstance is, and whatever road you end up going down, it is going to take a long time. That that much was very clear. And I think there was a real reality check toward the end. I got this sense of like people coming to that realization during that meeting where they haven't really had the opportunity to before, which as hard as it is, I think that's really important. Um, did you get that same sense? Like some people just like sunk in their chairs, other got, others got a little bit excitable when timelines started getting talked about. I don't know, maybe you know the people there better than me. I, I, I couldn't read it one way or the other. Talked to a few people after the fact, too. But anyway, yeah. At the end of the day, it's not up to us anyway. I think all we can do is follow our own floodplain zoning regulation, and what, what individual people decide to do is an individual person's decision. How to do it. 
I think one thing that we need to continue to do is we need to continue to support the forums where they learn more information about their circumstance. Because if we don't do it, who's going to? Uh, and by the way, one of the answers to who's going to is United Way. <laughs> and United Way is hosting one uh, Wednesday night at the elementary school with FEMA presenting, FEMA being there. Um, but I think that we are expected to be, from many different levels, the distributor of information. Um, and I think we can and should help to facilitate that information. It's not that we own it, it's not ours. They're not our programs, but we can help get the word out there. What's your sense of what's going to happen to the lower mobile home park? I don't know. Does anybody have Is that just gone forever? I don't know. No, the what Highland, yeah, west and yeah. east. What the lower mobile home park? Yes. It flooded in '95. Those those mobile homes were raised up, quote, out of the flood way or flood zone, and now they've been flooded. As I, Ben Harvey was at the meeting the other day, and I just, I didn't even know how many mobile homes are down there. Okay, There's must just under thirty. Be thirty down there. Yeah, there, I think there were 26 or 28 that got flooded. So 27, but yeah. And, <coughs> and then down on Westcombe is different. Like, that's just East Island. Right, right. Are there's... they all condemned? No. They're not all. <clears throat> but only, well, some are like owned and some are, not, some are rental. You know, Ken, Ken and Martha own, but it's my understanding that Martha owns the mobile home park now, but. Um, it's hard to tell with those guys. Um, they own they own some of them, but but quite a few of them are individually owned, right. and they're renting the lots. Yeah. It would just be interesting to know whether that can ever be rebuilt or not. Well, that would be under the purview of our floodplain zoning regulation. I agree. Um, you know whether or not they have to elevate, and how much they have to elevate by. Um, I'm curious, and I did talk to Rebecca about this a little bit, and I'm, I don't know that any of us will have the answer, but I want to ask it anyway. Um, we hit above a 100-year flood stage, and our zoning regulation, like the home, that old, it's from the 80s, it's the FEMA map, it's not, if that's a 100-year flood that we just had, that map is terribly wrong, um, which whatever, that doesn't matter, it's neither here nor there. Um, but the question is, do we know at this point if it's a 100 year flood? If what? If it's a 100 year? Well, I think it was more than a 100 year, it was closer to a 500 year. 500 year? Is that how it's being classified? I, that's what I've heard, but. But isn't, our, it isn't a 500 year flood not the purview of Flood plain zoning regulations. They're designed for the hundred year. The design, the design considerations are based on a hundred year, which is considered base flood. Right. Elevation. So, if, if that like is true, plane? and it's not in the five hundred year plane because it flooded in the hundred year flood of ninety five, technically speaking, they don't have to do anything, right? So the regulations are <coughs> based on the floodplain maps produced by FEMA, the mm -hmm. National yeah. Flood Insurance Program. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if this flood was, you know, this water was three feet higher than what those maps show as the flood elevation. The, what we have to go through now is based on those existing adopted maps. Mm -hmm. I understand. I was thinking forward. I was thinking more like, are we going to, like, and I know that this is going to happen in the future, but are we more likely to be considering this a 50-year flood, a 100-year flood, a 500-year flood? Like, where, what is the talk nationally about? Or maybe it doesn't matter right now. What are the maps due to be upgraded, updated? This right off. Once right for the last 15 years. Yeah, this is the, if you talk to 
anyone, any planners, anyone who does this type of work, they'll tell you FEMA is way behind. And if you talk to state level people, they've got different ideas of where the floodplain should be versus, you know, so it's, it's they're way behind them. Well, the state is who presented the floodplain at our thing. It makes a huge but, difference for home ownership. Well, yeah. it, it makes a difference as far as who's eligible for a FEMA buyout. You know, if, if you're not in the designated area that's supposed to be flooded according to their maps, then you are eligible for the same type of assistance. And it, it is very unfair. <laughs> well, is that true? Uh, more than that. He, he said as much at the, um, at the meeting uh, last I mean, that was the SBA. I think I it was the think SBA that's guy. True. I, no, think I think, I think, I think it makes a difference on whether you can get. What am I looking for? Flood. Flood the National, National Flood, flood insurance, insurance Program. program. Insurance. Yes. Yep. yep. That it's makes a difference. It's not whether you can get it, it's whether you're mandated to have it, which is really if okay. you're, if yeah. you're, Because if you're mandated to have it, the, the value of your property drops dramatically because it's tens of thousands of dollars yeah. a year. You're not, nobody's mandated to get it. If you're in that zone, you, in theory, you have to have flood insurance, but you can choose not to. Not, 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 with if, a mortgage. You have, not if you have a mortgage, don't get it. With a mortgage. Uh, well. Most people have mortgages. I, I told you today that Ron told me that there were roughly 200 homes within that existing 1984 flood hazard Special okay. flood How hazard many? area, a, a couple hundred, and he said eighteen of them have like national flood, flood insurance. What okay. about the other ninety percent? They can't all not have mortgages. I think all I know is that whenever I've talked to a bank, the first thing they ask about Johnson is it in the flood zone. Because they want you to have flood insurance. They, they do, and, and, a, and a title insurance uh, attorney, um, that's one of the things so they I, look so at, is the firm maps. I don't know how, how 100 and 182 homes in the, that are in this place don't have mortgages, but they might not. I, mean, I, I don't have mortgages. I find it really hard to believe, but you know, maybe they're all mortgages, maybe they're financed in some other way, uh, who knows? I, I don't know. Um, anyways, it's a big one deal. other thing, so the question was asked about when FEMA is doing the remapping, and we oh. heard that FEMA is doing the remapping within, like, this year. Oh, yeah. We heard, but I don't know if that's true <laughs> or not. Uh, and also, though, one of the things that Ron mentioned somewhere is that a drone, the UVM drone flyover will be happening on Wednesday, this Wednesday, um, which my understanding is that that... If the UVM flyover is in time, <laughs> that would be part of the consideration for the remapping. Uh, don't remember where I heard that, but I heard it somewhere along the way. Okay, are we ready to keep moving? Yes. Appointment of floodplain administrative officer. Really have to go into that one, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Um, we need one. Yep. And it should be somebody that's good with the public, understands the town, right? Knows a little bit about buildings and is halfway well well written, correct? I'm seeing, you know, the former hi, chair of the hi, select board. Hi. <laughs> chair of the select board. The former chair of the select board. Do you want Eric to do it? Here? I think he would be great at it. I don't, I don't. He's not going to do it. He wouldn't do it. Yeah, I think you guys I, are killing me. What about the former we chair see. of the trustees? Um, you're close to a thought that I had, and everybody's, well, I'm just going to put it out there. I, I um, stopped and had a conversation with Scott Meyer. Um, Scott Meyer said that he would consider it if there is nobody else out there begging to do the job. Um, I assume that's a Scott we have on Zoom. What's that? A Scott. You have Scott on Zoom? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I would, I would also say that I mentioned it to Ron Rajensky. Mm -hmm. Ron said that he would do it conceivably, but his overall thought process is it would be better if we can find somebody local and he would be willing to work with and train 
that person for, um, you know, for the position. So we, we, we have at least a couple potential options. Um, I will tell you that as far as the state statute is concerned, the planning commission is supposed to recommend and the select board <coughs> is supposed to appoint. Is so, this a, in I, budget, is this a paid thing? Position? What's that? Is this a paid position that we have money set aside for? No, we do not have money set aside for. Well, we, but my understanding is the work that is going to be done right now is is potentially reimbursable under FEMA. Right. There is a, um, a law that was adopted in 2018, and in Section 1206, it mentions about um, paying for this. So that's why this is referred to as the 1206 reimbursement. <coughs> mm -hmm. So you can plan to pay somebody because this is going to be a lot of work. It's going to be a huge amount and, of work. Yeah. And keep Ron involved in what happens so that he can process a reimbursement request for this. So yeah. given the lay of the land, if you will, I would think that we could put out an RFP for interest. If there's nobody that comes back, we could ask the planning commission if they accept the only candidate and they could refer. I don't think this is an RFP position because this person has responsibilities beyond our response right now. So it would be an appointment and in this specific case for emergency response that is FEMA qualified, we could pay for it, we can pay for it. But I don't want to put it out there as this is a paid position long term. So could we just post for volunteers like we typically do? Um, instead of it being an RFP, I guess the yeah, language being different. Maybe a request for qualifications. I, I completely you know. disagree on the compensation piece. I think we're I think we would be I think we're where we are right now because we don't have anyone <coughs> didn't have anyone who well, had any um, long term interest in doing it as a paid position. We're where we are right now because we had no clue that this even existed. I didn't. I did. Um, and I think there are other people around that, that did. Um, I think if you're going just my just my thought, if you're gonna hire somebody as a zoning administrator, you should be willing to give them some pay when they're when they're working. You know for years there was nothing for the zoning administrator to do and therefore there wouldn't have been any pay. Right. Um, you know, but we should establish in my opinion, we should establish a rate of compensation for when that person actually has to do work. But, and they should be paid. But if we post for a request for volunteers, when we meet them, we could decide the rate of compensation at that point? Are you saying, like in the posting, you would want to say that under certain circumstances, this is a compensation-based volunteer position? Um, it's either volunteer or it's paid. I think Scott would do a great job at it personally. <clears throat> you said he would only want to do it if there was nobody else, so that's what I'm saying. Well, we I don't should, want to put should. words in his mouth. If he's on, if he's on and wants to well, chime in, kind of an issue. But uh, let me see. If I can it out. You want to just call him and put on speakerphone? No. Scott, are you there? <laughs> I am. I like the echo effect. Yeah. <laughs> Hey there, folks. Hi. Okay, I can see you, but everybody else maybe can. I have a visual of the So, Scott, I think the question is like, what are your thoughts? Sounds like you're interested, maybe? I could be interested in it. Um, and, and just, it's a little hard to hear because there is a, a pretty good echo going on. It's because we don't but, actually have speakers. Yeah, yeah. I, I think for me to um, hop into that position, I, I would need some time with um, Howard to talk shop and Rebecca to talk shop. The, the only concern I have is because the FEMA flood maps are 
not really dialed into well. And if we're going to be asking people to do specific things, you know, working with that map, it's there, there's a bit of a gray area. I mean, there's one residence on Railroad Street, the first family owned and occupied building. I'll get the name out. They flood all the time. And according to the map, they're in the 500 year um, floodplain. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, it would be wonderful if we could true that map up a little bit. I'm not sure how stringent the rules are based on that map and why they're not based on elevation, um, which would be a lot easier to figure out with GIS mapping and whatnot. But that, that's my only concern, really. Um, Scott, so the 500, or I'm sorry, the floodplain maps are based on elevation. Rebecca knows what they are and she has um, used some topographic maps and those elevations to sort of refine the floodplain maps through Johnson. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to read. Um, and, and also she's overlaid them on aerial photos. So then mm -hmm. you can see if the structure itself is in the floodplain or not, because it's not a question of whether the property, part of the property is in the floodplain, it's where the structure is. So um, Rebecca could um, could help you with that, because if you were looking at the floodplain maps on the town website, I think everybody would agree that those are very, very hard to use and to determine anything about whether a property is in the floodplain. Okay. okay. Yep. yep. So, so, and, and again, again, I, I, I think, think how, how um, Duncan, Duncan summarized, summarized our, our conversation, conversation is spot on. on. So, so if there, there is somebody out in our community, our community that, that is jumping, jumping up and down, down saying, pick me, I have, I have the knowledge and I know how to work within, you know, government, government speak, they should get it. Um, but if you need somebody because you're not finding anybody, I'd be more than happy to hop in. <clears throat> Can I ask Scott? How's that for being question? firm? <laughs> oh, sorry, say that again, Scott. Yeah, huge echo again. So, like I like I told Duncan, if there is somebody who is more competent who really wants that position, they should get it. But if you're not finding anybody, um, I think I got the basic skills to pull through on this one um, after working for state government for so long. So, yeah, if you need me, I'm there. I think he does, too. My question to Scott would be, um, would he have any, it's fine if he wants to talk with Howard, um, but in all honesty, I think Ron Rajensky at this point might be a better source for, um, Ron and Rebecca might be a better source for information. Okay, that's any, great. Any issues working with Ron Rajensky on stuff like that? I'd actually yeah, prefer going with, oh, sorry, hold on a second, Scott, I'll be back on speaker. I'd prefer working with Rebecca first. Rebecca seems to be really taking the lead uh, and using Ron for support in any additional matters. Um, but because Rebecca's kind of boots on the ground right now, she has a pretty good feel for what's happening in Johnson at the moment. How long will she be in Johnson for, it, you think? Uh, she said a couple of weeks. Yeah, I have not heard from her since the meeting on Wednesday night, so I'm not sure what's happened with that. But uh, the we'll only see. reason I suggest Ron also in that is I don't think Rebecca has boots on the ground in terms of local zoning administration, and Ron uh, has yeah. Ron has 30 years of experience as a zoning administrator. I got you. Yeah, yeah. What were you gonna say? Yeah, you say you utilize Rebecca while she's here. While she's here. Okay, Scott. Okay, Scott. Scott, Scott. 
Okay, Scott, it sounds like we need to, um, we do need to put something out there, post something publicly to look to mm -hmm. see if anyone's interested. Um, but if not, you're our guy. Um, okay. So uh, let's see what we get for response. And we have another meeting on Monday. <laughs> so for the distant, for the near future, our meetings are on Monday. Very good. Very good. And so, so the, the, the other, other question, question I have on this is, is um, affected houses that, that might, might be under uh, scrutiny. scrutiny. Do we have a, an idea of how many houses there are? Because there's also the caveat of historic buildings not having to go through the process. Um, and the historic building part, and again, I spoke with Duncan about this, um, what is considered historic? And what, what is, is the date, date on that? that? Are we talking over 50 yeah, years so old or over 100? The historic part is if it's in an historic district or if it's listed itself on, I'm sorry, if it's in a historic district, then it's contributing to that district. And secondly, if it's a um, site that is listed by itself, on the state's register of historic places. Okay. And Rebecca's done a lot of work on that also. And she estimates that Johnson might be down to 15 to 20 structures that actually have to go through this substantial determination, substantial damage determination. Not including okay. the mobile homes? Um, no, I think that's total. Oh, I was right. I would say there must be more mobile homes than 15. Um, and the I one think last that the question. Homes, some of them are at an elevation that is just beyond the 100 year mark. Yep. I think that's the difference. So a lot of them and were elevated enough, just like you did the municipal building? Could be. Yeah. So, so the, the, the other question, question I have is regarding fee reimbursement for a rebuild. And they have their own rules, you know, where utilities would have to be moved up above whatever they consider the, the floodplain. And it sounds like our own town's work to get that permit would be one and the same. How close are they meshed together? Or are we using the FEMA logic on, you know, moving um, utilities to a higher level um, as well as the electrical boxes to a higher level? As I know in the past, 95. So what I've seen so far is that there is one application, and it's the town's application, and that has to be submitted to the state, to Rebecca's office, for their review before the town can issue a permit for the work, whether it's below the 50% threshold or, or above. Okay. So um, if is through and if it's, federal as we were saying before, I don't know if you heard or not, but certain work below if that property is below the 50 percent threshold then they need a permit but they're not required to do certain things okay, okay. But, that's but that's through the, the town that's, that's through the, the town, town and the state, state. i'm wondering federally, federally to get a federal, get a federal check, check from fema for rebuilding are they, are they using, using the same, same protocol, protocol that the state, state and the, the town, town is using state or, state or is it different, different. well that would well, be that would I think it's the individual assistance program, and I believe that's yeah, it's different okay. from what um, the town is doing for documenting the repair work. Okay. So basically, we don't have to be responsible for that aspect of it. We just need to follow our own ordinance. Yes. Okay. Um, Scott, thank you very much. We're going yeah, to post, move on, and we will be in touch. Okay, okay thank, you. thank you. So who's going to post that? Um, I can post it if I need to. Well, can we get Lydia to post that, actually? Do you mind? That would be lovely. That would be, yeah. Okay. Um, and I, I would strongly say I, we, we need to get going on this so this the turnaround time should be no later than next Monday 
Yeah. And it should be an action item on our board meeting. Yeah, we need to agree. Yep. That's what I said. We have Monday meeting. So you want submission dates due by close of day Thursday. Thursday. Okay. Well, it could be due no later than four o'clock yeah. Monday afternoon, I suppose. But it. But it, then, then we need to consider do again the okay. state statute says it's supposed to be a recommendation of the planning commission to the select board for appointment. Paul, do you see any issues with the planning commission retroactively <laughs> <laughs> honoring the select board's wishes? I'm not sure retroactively is going to meet the state statute uh, intent. So uh, you're saying you want applicants to respond by next Monday so that you can decide and choose on Monday? Yeah, because we need to get letters. Like, these letters determine the next step that the property owner can fall into. And at that Wednesday meeting last Wednesday, they said it was said that it would be a couple of weeks and they should expect letters within a couple of weeks. So, yeah, we need to get rolling. What we do is have an emergency meeting of the planning commission and ask them for their authority to execute the decision. Yeah, so I think we do need a, based on, we need to put a deadline based on your emergency meeting time so that we have responses in before your emergency meeting. No, if they have an emergency no, meeting and decide that. Uh, to uh, to delegate. I gotcha. Make a on okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So where would you post this vacancy announcement? Front Porch Forum, Facebook. It, I can copy it from Front Porch Forum and on the web website. website yeah. doing our, uh, our postings of things if we're not Just doing Just outside the municipal building. There's supposed to be two more places, yeah. so if we don't have information that. board at the fire department? There isn't, but we, I mean, you could, uh, you could do something that would meet the minimum it's requirements. Front porch, front porch forum, a... Yes, I think they have to be two physical locations, but I'm not positive. Did the mobile, the the mobile post office trailer? Is the closed trailer market? I don't know. There, oh. I mean, that, that would, if they would allow us to tape something on there, that would certainly suffice. There's also Jolly has one that's outside, um, and there's one inside at Maple Fields. I couldn't find the one at Maple Fields, and I went in and looked around and asked very specifically, and the woman just took my paper and said she'll figure it out. So I don't know where it is at Maple Fields. It's, it's uh, in the back, right by the bathrooms. I can bring it in there. Ever see it. <laughs> yeah. It's usually okay. covered by businesses and stuff like that, but I think they can make room. I know someone there. Yeah, I'm not really necessarily suggesting that we post it there. I'm just more or less thinking of official postings of our meetings and stuff like that. Technically, they're supposed to be posted in two places. But, you know, if you put one on the door and one under the bellboard, maybe that's two. <laughs> well, I do have a generic select board meetings are happening every Monday through August yeah. on both the bulletin board and the door, and maybe somewhere at Michael Fields. That and doesn't cover the <laughs> agenda, though. That, that's, that's, great. that's great. That's great for the, the agenda. basic meeting. But Where else in town would would see more uh, resident traffic? Maybe Fields or the post office, I would say, at this point. Maybe one of the banks. Yeah. Personally, the banks if you posted it on like the windshield of Mark Woodward's truck, more people will do that. <laughs> then, then Maplefields. He knows a lot of people. Um, okay, we'll leave that. that. Not the 
That's a relatively Jenna's small promise issue. or uh, either one, any of those. Would if work if for Jenna's one. Cafe has something somewhere oh, you yeah. can put it up, that would be yeah, a great two spot. Sons. They did post they something for us once before. I have stuff all over Jenna's promise too. Actually. Yeah. Okay. Um, next up is the Board of Adjustment for Floodplain Ordinance, Permits and Appeals. So Duncan found this handy dandy thing that basically says that the Board of Adjustment for Floodplain Administration is overtaken by a development review board if a development review, review board exists. Or that's the interpretation of the reading. Um. I, I did find that, and I just would like to say that I think that it would be well worth the effort and perhaps the money. Um, I, I, I think we maybe start with the LCT uh, municipal assistance folks. But I, I think there's a lot of legal issues here that we really, we want to get this right. Um, I think it's well worth submitting a little bit of information to Mac and asking them for an opinion. I got a, I got a statute. The statute to me is pretty clear, but we can't be the only community that's gone through this before. Who's Mac? Um, Municipal Assistance uh, Center. Center uh, oh, at VLCT. They have they have um, staff attorneys. Um, yeah, so just VLCT. Okay. Yeah, VLCT basically. I mean, the statute that I've got is 4460, and it basically says a municipality may not have a board of adjustment and a development review board at the same time. Upon the creation of a development review board, the existence of any board of adjustment shall terminate. It's fairly clear, um, but but again, I, I personally would feel more comfortable, especially since we're not going to appoint a zoning administrator until next Monday to... So is that something that Carl or Lydia can follow up on just for clarification? Just asking the LCG. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with reviewing them and getting an update on Monday's meeting yeah. today. And there are also some questions. I, I did some research in the vault today about the adoption of the floodplain rig. I think it's okay. Um, I did find minutes of a meeting where the planning commission said they had their required uh, public hearings and passed it on to the select board. And then the town voted on it as an Australian ballot item in 1998 and approved it. What I didn't find was a copy of a set of minutes from the select board. And technically they're supposed to have, well not technically, they are supposed to have a public hearing on a proposed regulation as well. I couldn't find minutes of a meeting of the select board saying that they had such a meeting. That doesn't That's mean... for the floodplain ordinance? Yeah, back in 98. Oh my gosh. I really wish you were not good at research. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I, what I really don't want to have happen though is have somebody, you know, have, the, have either the DRB make a determination um, or the zoning administrator make a determination and then have somebody appeal it. And somebody go to that, you know, go to court and say, "Well, your ordinance isn't valid," um, you know, and throw the whole thing out. That to me is a, a disservice to everybody. So I, I suspect it's fine, and I ex suspect everything is copacetic. But I just think it would be really nice to have a letter from somebody who actually has done this stuff. On yep. a routine and regular basis from a legal perspective. Okay. So that can just be part of the question for clarification. Yeah. Funneled together. Yeah. And and if if there if there are issues, is there something we can do to correct it now? You know, is, is there something we can and should be doing to fix it so that it's not a problem? Yeah. That, does that make sense, Carl? Yes, I said today that uh, at the least get this on your corrective action list. Do 
you update this and then readopt it, and you can make sure that the record's straight. Yeah, and we may want to do that at some point. You know, right now we're dealing. We're sort of, to use your um, analogy, we're kind of in recovery, emergency, you know, mode. That's more of a long-term uh, plan that we should think about. But <clears throat> yeah, I, I, you did send around the. Um the draft uh, policy from VLCT that I thought there was some very uh, interesting pieces of that we could incorporate into ours as well as some some updates. So um, I'm certainly open to a rewrite. The other thing that I was going to say is that this and other things going on, um, I, I, I do think we need to possibly put out uh, just a notice that we have open spots on the DRB because I don't believe we, I mean, I know that committee had not met for a few years when I was a member and I don't know that we would be able to get a full meeting together if we needed to. Were um, you an alternate, Shane? Or I was an alternate. Okay. Yeah. I don't think you were ever replaced. No, no. I wasn't. There's two vacancies. Um, this says that on the floodplain ordinance, it says that this was adopted at town meeting on March 3rd, 1998. Yes. And I went through the minutes and I found the minutes and it was indeed adopted by Australian ballot. What, the meeting that I don't know about, the select board before it went to Australian ballot was supposed to have a public hearing. Uh, and I don't know if they did or they oh, didn't. They may well have. Um, I didn't find record of it. Okay. Is that critical? If they didn't have a public hearing, could the town vote be not valid? I think somebody could challenge it. If, if, if the town didn't follow the proper procedure in adopting the ordinance, I think it would make a, it, it would make a, a some attorney's day somewhere. <laughs> um, It'd probably make their week. Yeah. Okay. Could make Let's follow up on it. Um, okay, cool. So we will take that as a follow up. In the in the meantime, should we be contacting the current DRB and ad in the meantime, advising yes. them that they might at least might be on the hook for being uh, being the uh, administrator or the uh, board of adjustment for the floodplain regulation? Yeah, I think so. Yes. Uh, in the meantime, who, the current people on the Development Review Board are Will, uh, I think it's Angier, is that how you say Angier. last Angier. name? Jim McDowell, Dave Butler, David Williams, and Kim Dunkley. Kim is an alternate. There is a vacancy for the board and there is a vacancy for the alternate. Um, and Will is the chair. And Will was, um, was appointed chair at the one and only me meeting that seems to have taken place uh, shortly after the board was established. <coughs> what, what are there at least five that? members? That was in 2008. Uh, there are five members with Kim Dunkley as the alternate, yes. 2008 was 18, I think it was, maybe 19. Okay, so it's recent, okay. Because I believe the statute requires a minimum of five, yeah. five members. And at some point, future item, they are supposed to have terms. We're probably the board should that should set those terms and yep. make sure that they are renewed and yep. reappointed. Yep. Um, that would be for a later date, and it's bright yellow in the term box on my thing. I keep to keep track of everybody on your calendar. No, it's not a calendar. It's actually a list of all appointments, officers, okay. and then eventually maybe I'll do the other part of it later. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah, we should follow up with those folks. Um, probably all of them actually together. I do not have contact information for most of them. I have Dave um, Williams and Kim Dunkley's contact information. And probably Dave Duckbuller I could dig out somewhere, but I have a feeling that they're all contacts easily accessible in the TOJ email account. Um, do you Dave this Butler has a new email <coughs> he just sent me last week, so I can send it to you back. Okay. Dave Butler. Dave Butler. Is he is Dave still in the planning commission? Yes. 
I know I have Will's phone number. I might have an email address for him. Uh, okay, I, I'm confident those they're all they all volunteer for different things over yeah. time. I'm confident they're in the TOJ. Yeah. But Will's if also on the fire department. Yeah, but if um, Dave's changed, we'll need to update that. If they are willing to do it, I would strongly recommend and encourage that we have some sort of training for them for this in that in that the town pay for it. Because this conditional use review is, um, again, we want to make sure we're doing that right. The, the worst thing you can do is treat one person one way and somebody another way. It's, it's got to be uniform in its application, and, and we want to make sure they're doing it according to statute. Um, anything else on the Board of Adjustment? Okay. Um, Sterling Market Updates. I guess that's me because I was asked if I would contact, uh, well, who, the one that I did contact was Ernie Parmelo. I didn't contact anyone from Associated Grocers. Um, I had a good conversation with Ernie. I would describe it as a preliminary conversation. I actually had a conversation with John Gregg, stopped me on the street today, um, and talked to me for about a half an hour. Um, I, I guess the bottom line is um, Ernie was very interested in continuing a dialogue with the town, the bottom line is they, they being Parmelo Real Estate and Associated Grocers of New England are separately conducting their own evaluations of what to do, where to do it, and how to do it. Um, I think it's safe to say that Ernie made it really clear that AGI is um, not willing to move into the current facility without some sort of significant flood mitigation measures taking place. Um, Ernie is looking at the existing building right now in terms of the, what they might be able to do to that building to um, flood proof it. Um, I would say any anything beyond that is is really preliminary and, and not worth talking about. Um, but he did say he would be happy to have you know continuing discussions with us um, about you know the status and whatnot. Um, and what, the way it was left was if I found out something um, that I thought would be useful that we thought would be useful to him, I would get in touch with him and he would get in touch with me. Um, as soon as they have uh, any more information about what their plans are. Uh, I will say this, this came from John Gregg, not from Ernie, but John said he's been talking with Ernie a lot. Um, the per square foot retail rental rate that Ernie has been giving the market is well below the market price, um, like $10 a square foot versus $25 or $30 a square foot for commercial retail, um, and therefore building a new structure either off-site or up next to the sidewalk, elevating it, becomes more problematic in terms of finding a tenant that can pay that kind of rent, retail rent. Um, so that's just something for us to think about. It's, you know, it's nothing. That was just a comment that John made um, in terms of their thought process of what they're thinking they can accomplish um, and whether or not they can keep a market in the community. The only thing, uh, other thing I would point out is 
Pomelo when we went through this process after the 2011 flooding, Pomelo kept that building vacant for two years um, to allow the town to try and find a tenant and, find, and secure some funding to make that all happen. So he basically lost two years worth of retail rent income on that building. So uh, all, that is just by way of saying that I think um, the Pomelo family, Ernie in particular, is interested and committed in trying to do something that will be good for the community in terms of keeping a market somewhere within the village area. The, the other advantage of the existing building, too, is I assume he doesn't have to go through Act 250. He doesn't have to what? Act 250. Probably, yeah. The minute he changes location or elevation, I assume Act 250 kicks in. It, it, it no doubt would, and Act 250 has, if I, Scott was talking earlier about the difference between our zoning regulation and FEMA. Um, our regulation currently says the, the first floor has to be at or above the base flood elevation. Mm -hmm. FEMA rules and regulations are one foot above the base flood elevation, and Act 250 is two feet above the base flood elevation. Just to be super clear. Yeah. My, sense, my sense is, is that it is more associated grocers than it is earning. I, I suspect, and Ernie didn't say this to me directly, but I suspect that at the end of the day, the decision probably is going to be more dependent on what Associated Grocers wants to do. That, that is my sense, too. But, you know, again, that's, that's discussion for the two of them to have as private, you know, two private business entities. You know, my, my comment to Ernie was the town is willing and interested to be part of the conversation. The town may be able to bring some funding sources um, or other resources to the table that you might not have access to, and we're anxious to be part of that discussion if it's useful. Uh, I think that's probably all we can do at this point. We could probably say the same message to Associated Grocers, but yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Other comments, thoughts? Is there a role for us as a select board to play with Associated Grocers? To what? To, should, can we do anything as a select board to encourage Associated Grocers? Uh, I don't know. I don't have a. I don't have a direct contact for anybody at Associated, Associated Grocers. I think Mike Violet might be the Just executive one. director for that organization. They're a cooperative, right? Well, they're. they're I don't think they're quite. A, they're very very similar to a cooperative. If they're not actually a cooperative, they're very similar to one. I think they have 115 or 117 stores throughout New England. And I don't know if that includes upstate New York or not. That's, That's huge. It's big. Um, yeah. It's New England Associated Grocers. I was just looking at it. They have, I don't know, 10 sites listed on their website. Um, I was just looking at their board members. I mean, I would be really surprised if we don't have connections with people who have connections with these people, honestly. Um, but. Reservation Trust, Duncan? Could be. Uh, I have on my list, I had that action actually, um, and I wasn't able to connect with them, but I will. My only cautionary note would be that I think we have a really good professional relationship with Ernie Pomelo, and I wouldn't want to, wouldn't want to see us do anything that would harm or be it considered a detriment to that, because I think Ernie could be a really good partner in this process. Has been in the past. Yeah, certainly, yes. Certainly has been in the past. 
And while I agree with that, I also worry that that ties us to the current location, which has been flooded over and over again. And given what you had mentioned earlier, that doing the type of mitigation work that would be necessary would likely significantly increase what he would need to charge for rent for anyone who would be in there, I do question whether, you know, the end goal of having a market in the village is is feasible unless we are saying leave the building as is and move back in. Not knowing what what the plan would be for flood mitigation at the existing building, if such is possible, I wouldn't want to, I, I don't fundamentally disagree with you, but there's information I don't have that we probably aren't going to have until they make some of the business decisions that they're talking about making. So I guess what I'm saying is I'm not, I can't really respond to what you, what you just said other than fundamentally I understand where you're coming from and agree with it in concept. Paul, your thoughts? No, useful ones. I do think the board should engage with both Ernie and AGI. Um, I think Don's got a good point. You want to go through channels and certainly not take any risk of alienating Ernie in any way. But it makes sense to put it out there that you're a willing discussion partner and to our goals. There's, there's a lot of different options. That you already articulated have some pros and cons associated with them. And I'll reiterate what I said at the last meeting, that we do have a lot of developable land that we are making strides toward developing. It's not an ideal situation, I know, for some people, but I don't think any of this is an ideal situation for a lot of people. And we might need to start getting creative with how we uh, think about how things look in the future. So. I don't have an issue reaching out to associated grocers, but I think we should, if we're going to go in that direction, I think it would be common courtesy to let um, Ernie know that we're going to reach out to someone there. I, I personally would feel um, like it wasn't a good faith effort on our part if we reached out I would feel like I was going behind her and he's back if we reached out to AG at Associated Grocers without advising him that we were going to do that. I agree. If I wasn't clear, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, that makes sense to me, yeah. Do you have a problem reaching out to Preservation Trust people? I think Beth has made a contact with the Preservation yeah. Trust. So you don't, but I mean, I'm not concerned about that specifically. About reaching He's out to asking if you're trust. worried about, for the same reasons you're worried about reaching out to associated grocers. You're not worried about preservation trust for the same reasons. I don't think so. Preservation trust was heavily involved the first time around yeah. um, with with the redevelopment of the store to become Sterling Market. And they helped us. They helped support get it going. Like I feel like that was a supportive system for. Yeah. yeah. Um, so do you want to take that step and follow up with Ernie and just say we'd like to just sit, make sure that our desire for having the market in town is known um, to the associated grocers so that he knows so that we can reach out and make that connection? Yeah, I'm, and, and I would ask him if there's an appropriate person to contact. I, I, John Gregg told me today it was a guy named Mike Violet, I believe. Um, who's, who he has been having some Ooh. contacts with, so I'm I'm happy to do that, and I think Ernie, you know, I think Ernie would be okay with it. Um, that name is not on the board. It's not. Okay. Okay. So um, I just ask: Is it the select board's position that uh, you folks are neutral as to the location, structure, etc. of the market? So there's one. We haven't discussed location specifically, but one thing is certain 
that the market is like a key component to our community dynamic and uh, we all agree over a couple of different meetings that it's important to have a market back here for that community aspect both you know both the ease um, both in providing the market itself and food access but also it's part of the community so we feel like the ties that it brings are important too oh absolutely and I'm, I'm glad to hear that I'm, of course I'm not surprised my, I guess my question was does the board not have a preference or does the board have a preference as to whether it's uh, flood hardened in the same, the same location or hooked up or over the like industrial park or have you not come to a board consensus? We haven't come to board consensus. Uh, it's not in our, totally in our control. I understand. It's not in our, yeah, I feel like it's not in our control at all at the moment. And when we talk about, like, I know the industrial park is thrown out. I'm just going to speak for myself, not for the board. I know the industrial park is thrown out quite often in conversations just with people that I talk to around the community. My reaction to that is we don't have funding to build out infrastructure for the industrial park at this point. Hopefully that changes, but we don't even have the funding to do that. And unless we are going to substantially increase our tax rate, which I don't see that happening, um, for the purpose of building out infrastructure, we need to be well positioned to get significant grant money in order to take the first step in building infrastructure out if we were to consider it for a market or any other purpose. We're just not there yet. Hopefully, that changes with a few grants we have. Right, exactly. With a few grants we have out there, but we're just not there yet. Don't make me luxury. You have already heard my spiel. <laughs> I'll say it again publicly. All throughout there that I think this situation probably increases different funding streams that we can access. And, um, you know, depending on, it, I, I've heard rumors of a CBDG disaster relief potential declaration. You know, there, there's different things that may come down the pike that we could use to add to our hopeful uh, funding stack, but. But hope isn't a plan. Hope is not a plan. Right, hopeful is great. My dad has another hope saying, but I won't say it on the minutes. <laughs> hope springs it. eternal. Okay. Uh, I'll, just throw out, not it. <laughs> I'll just throw out real quick that I, my own personal belief is I'm not, I'm not, I'm not willing to close the door to any possible alternatives. If I had my druthers and I could make everything a perfect world, I would move the building up to the sidewalk, elevate it, put a second floor on it, have access to uh, perhaps a combination of commercial um, residential space um, and have the market in the village because in my personal opinion, Having a core anchor business like a market in the village will help us foster the development, the long-term development of the village. And in the reverse, if we take it out of the center of the village, in my opinion, the rest of the village will die. Um, so that's my. <clears throat> it's pretty that's dire. My, um, my thought. Well, you don't know what could come in. Hmm. You remember the different yeah. options the last time that were floated besides the grocery store. Right. We would have had a dollar store there. Yeah. Or a Chinese which would have gotten store. flooded and they would leave and he'd get some other. I mean, again, there's lots of ideas out there. There's ideas yeah. of green space. There's ideas of. That's about a roller coaster one. Oh, yeah, Evan has his water park roller coaster. Water park. park, yeah. Yeah. Um, Are we about to adjourn? No, we're not. No. We're not. We're not. No. Um, okay, so anything else on Sterling market, Sterling market updates? Let's shift really quickly because I feel like this is the right segue to the um, planning commission involvement discussion. 
Paul and I chatted a little bit. I haven't actually updated everybody yet, but Paul and I chatted a little bit mm, Thursday. I know it was Thursday because they had a planning commission meeting on Thursday. Um, just about you know the what ifs, the possibilities, the what should we be considering, and most importantly, what is the planning commission's role in where we're headed. Um, so. In that discussion, basically, we agreed that we'd bring it here, have a discussion about what the Planning Commission's role could be, should be. I also asked Paul in our discussion about what the Planning Commission would be interested in helping with and be willing to committing to if we were to um, consider specific areas of recovery with Planning Commission. Uh, so, nice. anything you want to add, Paul? Uh, no, that sums up our conversation well. I will say I brought uh, the idea up at the planning commission meeting. Um, the members and attendants were willing, uh, willing to help and willing to uh, recognizing that this would be sort of above and beyond the task we've set ourselves to already, but that's okay. Um, it's unclear as to what that role might be and what you might want us to do. There's a varying kind of uh, our, our self assessments of where our expertise lies varies considerably. It's just that our uh, lack of expertise. Um, <laughs> We're envisioning the conversation now. Yeah. Looking, yeah, looking. Planning Commission theoretically should be thinking long term. So working on flood resiliency in the long term is probably a natural thing. But that doesn't help anybody in the immediate time frame. And should we just take a time out and say thank you for all the work that you guys have already done? It's been very impressive. Um, so if there's any way we can help in the more immediate time frame, remember to willing to do that. Um, I think it's something there. Okay. And, and in terms of those skill sets, like there weren't any specific areas beyond flood resiliency that were high on the list? Um, not really. I mean, we talked about, you know, what are the areas? There's long-term flood resiliency. There's, okay, what to do with the various municipal buildings, the town hall, the library, the post office, the most municipal and not, but, you know, should they be in the same location? Should they be flood hardened? Should they be moved? Should they be elevated? You know, is that an area you want us to work on? Um, it's for the market. It's a whole separate category. Um, in none of those do we have any, honestly, any particular expertise. So, I don't want to oversell what you're getting. So yeah. on that, yeah, so um, on like municipal buildings, mm -hmm. I guess long term, are you kind of saying that you guys, are, if that was your task, if you will, you kind of want an engineer's thoughts anyways? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we have to. Yeah. We don't have any engineers or construction people on that. It'd be a great municipal planning grant application, probably. And I'll, I'll wait, throw what, this. Wait, what? what did you say? It'd be a great municipal planning grant application. The other I'm going to talk about is always sort of keeping plan, or as I call long term, as an example of a municipal structure. And it's going to be more common. Yeah. So I think it's more a matter of where do you see in your need for help? And then there's just some the corner of that that we can actually contribute to in some meaningful way. People will probably laugh at me for saying this, but I think at some point in time, and maybe that maybe the Johnson Planning Commission isn't the right place to do this. Maybe the Regional Planning Commission is a better better place to have the conversation. But I don't. Know, I think there are 12 towns that are within the Lamoille River Shed Basin. 13 with a guy on. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, do we at some point begin to have a conversation regionally or watershed wise? on things that each of our towns might be able to do to reduce the impact of flooding. Um, and again, maybe that's, a, maybe that's more of a Lamoille County Planning Commission watershed planning 
activity, but that's probably a much larger conversation and involves the state as state well. State level, yeah. yeah. Rebecca was talking about it water after. levels prior to a flood. Yeah, but if 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 there were some entity or organization that could sort of coordinate the disparate efforts of each individual municipality. There could be a huge and the downstream impact. There could be a huge downstream impact. Yeah, I think, I think huge. that's great idea. I mean, it's a long-term issue for sure. But if you had flood water diversion programs in place and designated set aside lands for places to divert flood waters, flooding all the farm fields, as long as you had yeah. some sort of insurance policy in place to replace those crops, etc. Yeah, quarter wide could certainly help. Yeah. Um, I don't know about like the. Well, I do know about the watershed. I agree we should be looking upstream, downstream, and here. Um, when we're talking about here, though, I would like to hear suggestions for other areas um, related to the floodplain that could be lowered, cleared, whatever. We could do something about beyond Homes Meadow. Like, we know about Homes Meadow. We've been talking about it. But what else in the watershed? Um, can we be thinking about and looking at? Well, there's the other three areas that uh, LCPC. Yeah, LCPC has a few places. Which are privately owned. There were three other other areas. So yeah. Was Jesus Beach was one of them? Was Beard one of the others? No. No, no it's not Beard. No, the Bend by uh, Manchester's Old Mill and the Bend by... Uh, Used to be Coleman's pit, MSI owns it, I think. Mm -hmm. That's like the field beside it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they were all identified. Um, you need to get buy in. Identified for what? Sorry. No. <sighs> it's a long thing to read. Uh, and I'm not a river engineer, but if you lowered them by five feet, and in the one by MSI, Believe they had a box culvert going underneath Route 15, so the river didn't have to go this way to go this way. It would increase the velocity. Basically, it basically allows for a cut through instead of having to take corners um, for each of the rivers. It's like a back quite, channel. Quite unique, right? It's just high enough that it doesn't have water when it's dry enough, but it does take that extra burden off the backup situation when the water's higher now. Well, the amount of water we got. I know. Like, does that, yeah. Well, like, all of these things may have helped. I'm not an expert in saying how much they would. Yeah, if it reduced it by six yeah. inches, the municipal building wouldn't have flooded. Yeah, the, if you talk to Seth uh -huh. Jensen at LCPC about specifically Jeffersonville, he will tell you that this flood was significantly less damage because of work that they've done in the past. Um, of this of this type of work, so I, you know, how much it saves, who knows? But which we have one in the works or is being worked on. Yeah, those other three segments would be interesting to know. Um, you know if we could get a grant for engineering. And there's study. an existing study too. Yeah. yeah, but it's right. How do these go? LCPC does an analysis, and then we have to go after a grant to get an engineer to study it. And then we have to go after a scoping study to study what the engineer studied. And then we have to go after a grant study to pay study for the land. Study. Then we have to go okay, after so a grant what if we do material. this? If we're talking about clarity for the planning commission, <coughs> like the Loyal County Planning Commission is the right place to do this big work. We all seem to agree, and they like, already have been. And they like wa <coughs> watershed, watershed, mm -hmm. not as much chance. LCPC. They're pretty, I mean, <coughs> they have energy in that on Johnson. My point in saying that, let me just get to my point. My point in saying that is, is that of benefit to have the Planning Commission do also with a Johnson focus? Or are there other flood resiliency measures that they could be ideating on that are not about the watershed per se, but other mechanisms to flood resiliency that we should be considering? About and housing. of course, I don't know the answer. What, sir? About housing, I was going to bring housing up. Um, identifying locations outside of the floodplain where potential housing could be built. Um, partnering with someone like Lamoille Housing Partnership to 
get the ball rolling on some of that, finding builders, finding funders, et cetera. Um, yeah, I mean, the other thing is that I was going to say on um, the floodplain stuff, LCPC has already identified a few locations that could be used. Maybe the next step is the Planning Commission saying this is the best spot for it and here's what we want to do. Um, some of these mitigation projects can be just, you know, you carve the land out. Some of them can be built more recreationally. You know, we, we have the ability to kind of geoengineer, uh, you know, an area in a certain way. And I've seen it done in other areas where they create a nice beach out of it, you know, a nice river access for kayakers and canoers. So um, that's the type of thing that I think we could have local input on. And if we're thinking about Holmes Meadow, I believe that is from, it's 2023, I think that was from the 2011 flooding event that the mitigation money is coming. So <clears throat> if, we, if we did look at some Johnson site specific areas and study them a little further, we might be in line for mitigation funding when it comes along six or eight or ten years from now. Yep. We're not enough stuck here. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds poor. But that's long but that's long term. That's it is a long term point. help. Sure, what are you it's all about you? Is that what you're basically saying? You don't want to do it? It's not about you? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just trying to think of something that's actually fruitful. Um, well, um, that won't, that won't get lost, right? Five years from now. Well, this is the challenge of the planning commission is all of your impact is kind of longer term, right? You know, certainly thinking about the impact of housing and where housing, you know, um, you you guys are going through the municipal plan process right now, right. anyway. Yeah, that would be a perfect segue into you know building flood resilience into the municipal planning process for sure. Maybe we should get yeah. some really big pumps. Where are you going to pump it to? Downstream. <laughs> On the other side no, of the hill. Over the hill, yeah. <laughs> no, that's not downstream. That's not answer. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that, Paul, to your point about the flood resiliency, I just think that there are ways, and to Carl's point, to think creatively about all the list of problems that have been happening. And like maybe that's just the ask right now is for that creative thinking and coming back to us every once in a while. And we can reach out to you, of course, too. <clears throat> but flood resiliency around, it sounds like housing came up as a topic, building it into the municipal plan, which is due when? When is that due? End of the year? Uh, more or less, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to tonight, but if we can help, we can look at it. Um, we'll be meeting every Monday. <laughs> You're welcome to join. 30, but our location changes. Every week, pretty much. So we're keeping on the post. We're here for the rest of August. In, in support of what Beth was saying, too, if, if you guys have, you know, as you're brainstorming about issues and whatnot, if you have a specific topic you think makes sense for you guys to be involved in, I, I would certainly like to hear about it. Me too. And if there's something you feel like we, for planning-wise, the thing is that Carl reminds us that we're in recovery right now. And the thing planning wise that I'm concerned about is that I think we should be taking some steps in planning now, even though we're in recovery. I may be getting ahead of myself, but if the planning commission can be two steps ahead of us in what we should be thinking about because you're meeting on what the future looks like, I would personally be very grateful. It would put me at ease a little bit more than I am at the moment. Um, yeah, what? Well, I just want somebody two steps ahead of me. <laughs> yeah, no, I like the idea. Two steps ahead of you, Beth. <laughs> That's not true. 
I like the idea of keeping our action in the, the now, but then thinking ahead, you know. And to be clear with that four aspects of emergency management, except for response, you're never just in one of those right. quarters. Right. Because even now, you've got mitigation work going on because of the Holmes Meadow thing, for instance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. but it's just that maybe your more of your focus right now would be on recovery rather than starting new planning things. It's, you've got a perfect opportunity to work on planning. If the planning commission is working on the town plan, mm -hmm. certainly they wouldn't be considering it because it's about flood resilience because of the recent event. Yeah. And that would go to about basically every chapter of the of the plan except There's for actually a chapter on flood resilience which is coming up. So yeah. Yeah. How appropriate. Imagine that. Put that plan check when the water gets really high, check it every fifteen minutes. <laughs> Don't forget. <laughs> Don't believe it for we made that mistake. Yeah. Yeah, geez. <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah, so Paul, let's, I know this isn't as clear as it should be, but I think that focus on the flood resiliency was good, and any ideation you have around what we <coughs> should be thinking about going forward, we'd love to hear it. So I think just probably keeping those communications going. Um, and I would encourage anyone from the Planning Commission who wants to join select board meetings off regular meeting, so the second and fourth Mondays are going to be flood focused. If anyone's interested in, right. and anybody on the planning commission that might want to serve on the DRB. Oh yeah, yeah. We're also <laughs> looking for DRB, the development review board. Yeah, there's two agency and a alternate board. Yeah. Am I yes. imagining things, or can you not be on both? I think you might. You right. can't be on the select board or the planning commission to be on the DRB. Yeah. David Butler's on the DRB, isn't he? Yeah, David's on it. You yeah. might, oh, might yeah. want to check that because I was an I'm alternate. pretty sure you can't be. I think that's true, too. I was an alternate and then you I can't be on the planning on. commission and the DRB? Yeah. I know. Yeah, right. on My previous employer, they had a couple of people who were on both, and they did that on purpose oh. to provide some continuity. Yeah, in one one. So I, yeah I know. The, yes. I think the statute actually says that the planning commission can serve as the DRB. So is it just the select board that can't be? No, I think it's planning commission. I think it's both. Uh, I read that somewhere. I, I did too. I read it. And it was a lot of readings ago. <laughs> it might be in our ordinance, maybe. We should look at it. I don't know, I'll have to look at that. Okay. I'll give you his number. The Board of Adjustment or the Development Review Board for a rural town or an urban municipality may consist of the members of the Planning Commission of that town, or they may include one or more members of the Planning Commission. That is good to know. Is it our own DRB? Don't we have? Maybe it's the floodplain zoning. Is that? I think that's what it was. It's the floodplain zoning. It's not the. It's it's the floodplain zoning. I think. Okay, we need to take a follow up on that. I'll I'll go see if I can dig it out. There was some position that we appointed this year. Yeah. It, it might have been that administrative officer position I'm thinking of. Okay. I think we need to look it up and follow back up. So let's, the three of us, since we're all the ones talking about it, we'll each take the action. You can add action. that to the question list for the MAC attorney. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, Paul, anything else that you have for us? Uh, no. Well, I guess one question, just in general. What point, I think, as I said before, you guys have done a lot of work, and a lot of it is, is obvious to people, and a lot of it isn't. At what point do you kind of reach out to the townspeople and say, hey, here's what's going on, here's what we're doing, here's the various things that are in motion? Do you feel a need to communicate, or do you think that's getting out through 
communicate how, mm -hmm. how, like how, what do you mean, like a formal write-up of what we've accomplished and what we have in front of us? Uh, uh, I'm just wondering if there needs to be like some town conversation. I heard. Like an open uh, forum of uh, some sort? I heard talking to John Gray, I heard somebody else talking to John Gray, and he was saying, you should be an all-out press for, you know, this, that, and the other thing. Everybody's involved in it. You guys are already working very hard to get our office visible to everybody. So you're talking about like a town hall and collecting feedback on, in a I guess public so. forum? Yeah, I don't have it fully formed. I'm looking for your thoughts, but yeah, I think so. Flood hall. That, that concept sort of goes to the, I think I might have talked to you about Waterbury's process after, and they had, they had a FEMA person or a FEMA group Spear had that, and it, it was exactly that. It was it was like, what do we want to be when we grow up? You know, a big meeting, um, and they, as a community, decided, you know, what their what their goals were for economic development and flood resiliency, and all those things. And I, the guy that told me about that was the reporter Dave, who's married to Sue Minter. Oh yeah, yeah. good man. Huh? Good man. Right? Yeah, yeah, that guy. He, he was at the Genesis. He was at the Genesis, yeah. And he said that Waterbury did that after 2011. And according to him, it was FEMA. How far after? It feels like that's a case manager thing. I don't know. You know what I mean? Because we don't have a case manager yet? Yeah, we don't even have a case manager yet. <laughs> but it feels like that's a case manager thing, and I think it's a great idea. I just don't, like, to the point of not having a fully formed... I don't want to be too early in that. Well, what this guy Dave said was that without FEMA's act, active participation in that, it wouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. um, and they also had um, Bill Shepelek as their town manager, and Bill, you know, did a tremendous amount of work on it. Um, so you know, it was really a community effort, but there was a there was a spark plug yeah. for it, you know, and the spark plug were these, you know, this FEMA task force. Um, well, it makes sense the way you, make, you don't want it to be a free for all either. I mean, right. You need to have some things in motion. Yeah. And, and somebody skilled at facilitating. Is and we might be well up in line, even though Montpelier had a lot of devastation on a per unit or per capita basis, Lamont County is actually worse off than Washington yeah. County. Lamont well, County is highest residentially in terms of residential impact. Yeah. Um, I am all for those kinds of things. I love those kinds of things, just generally speaking. You all know, because I tell you every time something like this comes up, how much I love them. Um, we just don't have the I don't bandwidth think we're, for I just don't think we're ready yet, yeah. actually. <clears throat> I don't think we're ready yet, but I think we definitely should. Or is that two different um, subjects? So what I was understanding from Paul's comments was you're wondering just like a, you know, some type of communication from the select board to the public about what's going on, what they've done so far, which could be um, just like a special meeting, maybe at the school again, where people could come in, attend to ask questions, and have also have it taped and played on Access TV, just like a um, like a report on flood response, and then this other thing is a planning type of function or an event that the planning well, commission might spearhead. I think you're right, that's kind of how it presented it, but I was seeing that sort of as a prelude to some conversation. Because maybe ideas out there in the town that we haven't had the benefit of, or people that want to work on some of these committees for some of these issues. So they kind of feed together. Um, yeah. I like both. And I, I personally am not ready for either. I'll tell you. Yeah, I think we're too early. Uh, I think it's a little too early. And that being said, I am working on writing up all of the events as I see them. I actually started that this weekend, too. Uh, I think we just need to form this a little bit more. And I have plans to kidnap Evan for a couple hours so that we can, we can like, criticize and add to what I've put together because we spend quality time together. Um. <laughs> uh, Real quality. Anyway, I like both. 
personally. Do you think that there's other, like, what are your thoughts, Carl? Does, do you have more? Well, I think you just get together and decide a plan and what you want to accomplish. And I, I think I understand Paul's point. It could be um, a meeting as I was describing, but at the same time, then you could ask the public for their thoughts on some key issues like housing or like the market or the wastewater treatment plant and mention that there's got to be more work done on all of these issues and does anybody want to you know, more get involved. I don't know, if they have a meeting like this fairly soon and the, the substantial damage determination process could be something that's brought up and explained again so that people I think that's a different purpose, but yeah, I hear you. I think that's going to happen actually Wednesday night with the United Way again. I think we're going to probably keep posting things like that because um, FEMA will do that presentation. I don't even know. I don't know the context. All I know is that they're doing it, um, but United Way is hosting for whoever shows up from like 5.30 to 7, I think, Wednesday at the elementary school. But um, yeah, I hear your point. And I'm also reminded of a saying that my father used to have. Be careful what you ask for, you might just get it. Yeah, I'm, the thing is, like, I think if we're going to gather feedback <clears throat> on specific topics, we need to be, in, like, I feel like we would need to present it in a way that suggests that the town can't do everything and we need to focus our energies on the most important things and what are those most important things. And yeah, you're right. Everyone has an opinion. Or two. Yeah, or many, yes. The good oh. news is, even if everybody has an opinion, I doubt that many residents will actually show up. Mm, I think it might be different this time. I hope I'm The right. Wednesday meeting, there were, that Wednesday meeting on mm -hmm. impact, there were 50 people. It was people. 40 or 50, right? How many left early? Two. Mark, Mark and Will. Mark and Will. Mark and Will. David really? Williams said he left early. Oh, David Williams did three, yeah. And Maria said so technically four people. That would be a gangbusters meeting. Um, but there are a lot of people, and there are They're a lot of engaged not. people. And okay. everywhere we go in town, we hear of a whole bunch of opinion from a whole bunch of engaged people. I think it's a little bit different right I'm now. More than willing to share it on a one on one basis. Yeah, I know. I'm surprised all of our committees aren't full and we don't have. Yeah. 40 applications for the two select board seats until next year. That's what I keep telling people, you know, hey, okay. you got ideas, um, planning commission needs you. Paul, thank you. Well, we will definitely be talking more, <coughs> whether you like it or not. Um, See you every other Monday, Paul. Can we? <laughs> um, okay, I think we're going to skip the joint meeting agenda I items. I think we got a good just on one item for that. Just on one item, short and long term. Municipal building. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if there's anything else for a joint meeting, just let me know for agenda items, and I'm going to be talking with Ken very soon, uh, probably tomorrow. Actually, I have another idea that I'll share with you right. offline. Okay, sounds good. Um, SC SEOC debris removal guidance. Oh yeah. Anybody want to talk about dumpsters? No. And trash? You know I love uh, I got a call from our regional uh, SEOC contact today, and the question was if Johnson was handling the rear removal, because um, there's some towns out there that still aren't able to handle it. Um, and if we weren't able to handle it, they could get state contracts in with those big apple trucks in Montpelier and Barrie. Or they're starting to get like some state dump trucks involved for smaller setups. I, my personal feel is that we have a pretty good hold on it, but I told them I would ask the board. And if we want to get the state involved to use state contracts or something for some iteration of debris removal. Is this a one time thing or would they circle through? I think it's up to what is wanted. Um, there's a want from SEOC for debris removal to be done before snow flies. We have a month. 
Uh, <laughs> snow we covered up. <laughs> Global warming. We have like six months before we have to worry about snow. Okay, I got you. So, or they call it climate change now. I mean, the thing is that every time I drive through our affected neighborhoods, I, for some reason, am always I'm always shocked. And you think that as often as I drive through, I wouldn't be shocked anymore, but people are still digging stuff out yeah. all the time. Um, but I guess the question is, are we able to manage what's coming out or not? There's a whole bunch of stuff down on the Highland Drive areas, like a lot of big piles, that I don't know if the residents are able to manage. It would have to be in the town right of way, I assume. For the state to pick yeah, up. the state's not going to touch it if it's not in the town right away. Um, and east and west are not town or, or a state highway right away, obviously, mm -hmm. but that's the same. I mean, I would kind of like to not have to deal with it every time it comes up, and it comes up. It'll keep coming up. And it's keep coming up. If the town, if the state is call. willing to do a one, like on a weekly basis, send a truck through and pick up everything you can each week until you don't pick stuff up anymore, that would be really lovely. Or we call you and tell you that we don't see any more stuff. So do you want me to get information on that? See what it looks like coming to the board on Monday, a week from now. That would be Yeah. I think in, in Eben, find out. I mean, if they send a truck through and they don't send a bucket loader, that means we're, we're providing a bucket loader because people aren't going to be. Because those highway guys aren't going to throw stuff up into the truck beds. Is that true? Yeah. Is that what it means that we do? Well, I don't. Well, no. Find out. No, get clarity he, on he that. He said that maybe they could get the gravel trucks that are involved. Yeah. Is that a is that a dump truck that has a it's a log truck that they put a box on the yeah, or on a big log truck. bunks. That that might Which I heard wasn't very effective. They look pretty cool. Yeah. I wanna drive one. <laughs> Anyways that you know, I Beth I keep seeing it too when I drive around town. Down on lower Main Street there's plaster and laugh piling up and so I can get information on it come to you in a week. If we're all good with so that. in the meantime, we actually do need to do something. They're doing something tomorrow morning. Okay. Well, well to be clear, the highway guys are picking up on lower west uh, west to lower Main Street at the 333 Main. It's 333. 333. No, three. And also, they're putting a dumpster down at. On West Elm Road is what I heard from Jason. The problem with that is that it's the monitoring. <coughs> to the when you what are you concerned about with monitoring? The other stuff is going in or no? no stuff is just going that in? we have to monitor and track everything around debris removal to put dumpsters out so that we can get reimbursed. So, I mean, we could have people go down and take pictures of front yards right now because there's plenty to see. I don't think I took pictures when I was down there last. Um, but we need to do that if we're going to do that. Highland is down past the I think. lower mobile home park. Which one that is? is it's Highland, the lower. Highland, East and Highland. One. Yeah, the yeah. ones that go out on either side there. Yeah. Those are not town highways. No, they're not, but it would, it would associate the removal with the... It would be a lot easier if those are class four. The thing is, it associates the debris with the address, and that's the key, and then the people can put it in the dumpster. <coughs> you need to document the relation. So you need to document the existence of debris? There's like the rules for debris documentation are. But the dumpster itself is supposed to be within a town. A public, Highway, right? Public yeah. Right. Unless right. the mm. Yeah. 
What's going to happen with the mobile homes that are abandoned? Are you going to keep asking us the same question until we answer? Maybe. I don't know. Are you looking to buy something? You seem like so we're doing a board of abatement hearing on debris removal. There's going to be a those will, those will be like the mobile easiest home. to remove, right? My Let's property see. owner also has a stake in that. Some property owner might be dealing with them. Right. Yeah. Um, according tomorrow, to, I'm sorry, regarding tomorrow morning, I don't know if you, if Jason put that in the email or whatever to you, but <coughs> their plan was they were also going to go on East and West Highland Drive to pick up stuff. No, he did not say that. To me. All right. So I was supposed to. Uh, he contacted me and just before I came in the building here tonight, and so I'm supposed to get back to him to let him know. Do you approve of him going on those two private rows? Because he would not be able to document that and get reimbursement for their time and expense. No, I don't think they should be picking it. They can pick up on that Route 15. Take a picture. Can you take a picture of the of the truck on Westcombe Road? Yeah. I don't think that they can. So because yeah. that's not a town-owned road, they. You can't get reimbursed. You can't get reimbursed. You go outside of the town road right of way. Okay. Oh, supposed and so to the towns that have been pot. doing this pickup with the state contract, they emphasize the debris has to be put out as close to the road as possible, but definitely has to be in the road right of way. And it needs to be sorted. Right. And so the like, thing is, like, the. Yeah, those two roads would be how they are now. Either way. We had volunteers moving things from private property to town right of way. For a lot, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I would argue that if the dump truck is on a town right of way, and if debris is not in the town right of way, but is transported there by maybe a bucket loader, we can't get reimbursed for the bucket loader hours or the main hours to move it. Once it's in the town right away, it's our problem. So go pick it up, dump it, pick it up again and put it in the dumpster or the truck and then no, just put it in the bucket and drive it to the town right away. That's creative thinking. You can call it that or whatever you want. But I can see some heartburn. No, I, I tend to agree with that. You know, at the end, I think we get seventy-five hundred dollars from the community foundation. If worst comes to worst, we can apply that money towards uh, debris removal from the park. I guess the question then becomes: is how much? How much is the park owner responsible for? Which I think would be Fina's question. Um, you know, is the park owner responsible for some of that debris cleanup? Because they've been collecting rent on those, and they own the highways in there, the roads. So. That probably is the question. It's a public health hazard either way, but that's a good point. Yeah. Maybe the park owner could drive a bucket loader down there. The other thing is that um, I know we've had emails from Green Up Vermont, and um, they're coming in at the end of the month. Uh, Hold on, wait, 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 wait. There's still. You guys good? We're done. Always good. I'm done. Yeah. Before you talk about that, can we just settle this? Where are we landing? I'm fine with following up with Harry. Um, what does that mean? Following up with Harry? What does that if have you to do want with? It, if the board wants to know more about like the state contract or state. Yeah. Okay. Like what that would look like. But what about Jason and the, those private roads? That's what I was thinking. I, I think say that's it. a very good point. We're trying to support the citizens of the town and help get things cleaned up. Make it happen. It means you get reimbursed for whatever you get reimbursed for. But if there's stuff that we can't get reimbursed for, then we'll get up to the right there and move the stuff. I, I agree. You'll stand up at town meeting and defend that? I mean, the thing is that, uh, like, we've been doing what we needed to do for debris removal. Debris removal. Can't knock. Um, I can tell you that it wouldn't be the first. Look. Okay, so Jason's on it tomorrow about it. 
Jason. And Casella is delivering the thing on Westcom Road. The town crew will help with pick up. The Casella is delivering a box down there tomorrow. Oh yeah. Yeah. Off Westcom Road. So it's a go with Jason. Yep. So they can bring in the bucket loader or the backhoe down and fill the box. And take a picture of the truck on Westcom Road. Make sure you take. They need to take yeah. a picture of the debris associated with the properties too, please. If they could. Why is debris removal such an issue? Debris removal has been like the oh my gosh. If we just started pushing it in the river from day one. So okay, stop fun. it. So, are there any other agenda items that I didn't call out that we needed to talk about? Uh, that were added? No. Just the executive session and a follow-up to? There's an executive session, session with a potential employment offer following it. Yep. Okay. Uh, so, that being said, are we ready? A motion to enter into an executive session as allowed by 1 BSA 313A3. <laughs> Waiting, Carl. Go second. second. All right. Good night, all. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Thank, Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. Does someone talk to you after the meeting?